officially so mute everybody. Seven. Yeah, well, I don't know. I didn't see. Is Valerie here? I don't know. All right, well, then we'll go to plan B. Wait, somebody just switched. Well, yeah, we'll go to, if, if we think she's going to be late, I can always do show and tell if uh, she doesn't want to, but I'll need to have hosting ability. Uh, or I'll just tell Eric where to go. Uh, first thing I want to talk about, one thing I want to do, I'll bring up some old president business. Uh, Lee Pratt, you mentioned that you had an old Viewmaster program for our Viewmaster set. We wanted to make sure you sent maybe a scan of that to David and Susan. Turn uh, your microphone on. Lee. You mean uh, back when uh, you guys did the Viewmaster exhibition yeah. a few times? I can send something to Susan. Yeah, if you could for the, and anything like that, any exhibitions that they might be missing, or you can either check with them before you send it, or just go ahead and send it if that's okay, Susan. That's fine. Thank you. And, Susan, Susan, I'm not dead yet. That's good. That's why you're not on the 3D Legends, Lee. <laughs> in case you're wondering. But so to give a little started your page, just in case. <laughs> you know, there have been people who asked me why they're not on the page, and I told them the requirement is that you have to be gone, dead. Yeah, it's like, the, uh, like a U.S. postal stamp. Yeah. Or did you ever see the right stuff? Yeah. Remember the scene in the bar with all the pictures? And the guy comes in, he's hot shot. And he goes, I'm going to get myself up on that that thing. And they go, that's only for dead pilots. Right. <laughs> so. Got to be careful what you. Uh, yeah. yeah what you and I think he did end up on it. But, uh, <laughs> you could start a living uh, legends play page. And then when people pass, you can just m migrate them over to the other page. So, well, uh, Carl, if you want to start that, feel yeah. <laughs> who qualifies drop to drag. be a living legend? Uh, Only Carl and David. Let's drop and, and drag. And drop and drag. Abraham. Anyways, we had a board meeting this week, and what we decided there were a few things that were voted on and decided. I'm not sure they're all clear. They're having to do with competitions. And if anybody was here at the last meeting, David Kuntz and uh, uh, oh. Carl Wilson suggested that we uh, have a competition that they be uh, disqualified or whatever, just because they win all the time to encourage other people. Now, nobody thinks that that would really help so what we're doing is twofold. We're going to have them stay in a group. We have an A group and a B group, uh, just to explain to people who are not Well, I already pulled us out, so don't get too far ahead of yours. <laughs> well, then you did that without permission of the board. And well, I'm no, we got the We're right going to, to have to purchase, okay? do something Thank very you. mean to you. Oh, if you. If you want to kick me out of competition. Can somebody okay. mute David Koontz? <laughs> <laughs> No, what I I think it's fine. I, what I was saying is you can disqualify yourself because we've done that in the past. There is precedence where Jim Long disqualified disqualified himself. So he competed. He was in all the competitions, but he made himself ineligible. And and I think that's fine if that's what you want to do. So we decided that would be one thing that we would change. So if you want to disqualify yourself, you can. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'd rather not you not, but you know. So anybody, it doesn't have just have to be David or uh, Carl. Maybe Abe. He's won a lot. Yeah, I Abe. I think you no. No. Oh, you oh, know, you guys. I know Abe. you discussed it at the board meeting, but I have to say that as a long, long, long time member. As David and I got better and better, uh, mm -hmm. it became better stereo photographers and entered the competition, our goal was to uh, improve our photography so that we could 
be up there. Right. So not only be in the A group so that we could, you know, maybe win a second place or a third place, or maybe someday get the first place. And we did. And the thing is, if, when you take the person out of first place, then you're saying, oh, well, you know, you can win, but you're really not that good, not as good. And yeah, so, I totally uh, agree. And we argued that ad nauseum at the board meeting. So, okay. and they didn't agree to it at all. So I don't really think we need to re okay. litigate that. I mean, I'd be fine. Maybe we'll save that for after the uh, main part of the meeting. But I do want to bring that up. And the other thing we changed is that anybody who's in the A group who wants to compete at a lower level can go into the B group. Uh, it doesn't just have to be people who, I think we had a requirement they can't have one, we used to have a requirement that once you won a medal, you could not go back into B group. And, but since so few people were in B group, everybody won a medal every time. And some of us, myself included, have not really improved enough to be any more than kind of a middle tier of the uh, A group. And you know, we might want to show our vacation shots or something, or try to get a good score, but uh, A minus. Okay, we'll call it the A minus group. But what we don't want to do is do more groups or categories because things are vulcanized to a point uh, that the groups are too small anyway. So we need A, more people in the groups, a better distribution between A group and B group. So that's how we're doing that. And another thing is, uh, oh, we have prizes specifically for people in B group who start and enter and do 100%. And the prize is from DreamWorks, Valerie is supplying them. So there will be an A group prize and a B group prize the B group prize will be the better prize. So we just want to give some uh, more recognition and encouragement to get more people competing. Uh, any questions? I don't see any hands up. Let me, I don't have that category. Where do you put your hands up? Does anybody see any hands up? How do you put your hand up? That little, oh, what is that thing? Oh, forget it. If anybody has any comments, raise your hand. I see two pages. I Only see... participants get the hand. Steve, you won't see it because you have hosting. Okay. Uh, I see. Uh, oh. Actually, Barry, Steve, you should see it. Barry Rothstein. Can you unmute yourself? Okay. okay. Um, just a quick possibility. Um, I play sometimes in bridge tournaments, and they have stratified games where, depending upon your level of qualifications, you don't even say what you are. They just kind of know. You know, it's like ratings and things. Um, and so you don't have to say this is A group or B group or C group. Rather, if you are such as you know, you 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 have. Uh, people that are, are, have not won awards yet, they're automatically eligible for awards in B group without having to put it into A group or whatever else. So until you've won a few awards or something like that, then you're, say, from that point on A group. But until then, just assume B group. And uh, until, you, you know, so many points or God knows what have accumulated, but then you don't even have to say that it came in as A or B. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. It could be directly done by the competition director because that that was also done in the past where <laughs> all of a sudden I was hey, in a group. Steve, are, and then are I, we actually going to get to, to yeah. starting the meeting itself? That's yeah, I just wanted idea. to finish this. <laughs> uh, two things I want to talk about that. I was waiting for Valerie to show up. He's vamping. Is she here? I don't think so. Okay, so a group... We'll talk about, okay, so we'll continue on that at some other time or after the meeting. The other thing I wanted to talk about, 
uh, we'll talk about after the meeting as well. So we'll get on with the meeting uh, unless people wanted to talk more about this. Let's do it at the end if they do. Yeah. Okay. We're going to start show and tell now. So I'm going to do first. So uh, let me see. It. I don't think I can spotlight myself, but maybe I can. Yeah, you're good. Or somebody else can. Okay, I'll do the first show and tell since Valerie isn't here. She's excellent at it, so I don't think I can do good at it. This is my Oculus Quest. I've been using this for quite a long time. So for 3D viewing, I think we talked about these a little bit in the past. What I wanted to talk about today was they have a new Oculus Quest that came out. It is uh, the Oculus Quest 2. It's more available. It costs $100 less than this. It has actually a higher resolution screen, but whether in higher refresh, 90 hertz, so it will eventually be very good. The problems with it are the straps are not very good. They changed them and people are complaining already about them. The second thing is if you get the new Quest 2, you have to be in uh, Facebook. You cannot, this Quest, you cannot, you don't have to be in Facebook, which is really annoying because they can, if you have to be in Facebook, because they track everything you do. It's very invasive. A lot of people will not buy the new one. So uh, if, you, if you see it, you probably will have to get it. But if you're at all concerned about your privacy, get the first one. And also uh, the, the tracking is much better. The LEDs uh, work better. Um, so far, that's from the reviews I've seen, which are still preliminary. That's my show and tell. Anybody, who else had a show and tell? Uh, I think Frank Little had something he wanted to show. Okay, Frank. Okay, here goes. All right, uh, that one, oops, wait a minute, here we go. All right, uh, oh, let's get into and get on here. Oops, I'm not getting what I thought. This is a side-by-side -side cross eyed pair. I thought I had the ability to get uh ah, I'll show you. Here we go. Anaglyph. Although I think they're not bothering to look. And, uh, this is a, no, Frank Frank yeah. we're we're seeing yeah. we're seeing a debugging screen right now. Oh well that's no good. I uh, thought there was some purpose. <laughs> Uh, I think you need to there? stop stop sharing and share share a different window. Yeah. Uh, how about that one? No, Same it's one? it's it. You're sharing it. It. I think you need to stop your screen share, and yeah. then okay. do the share. It select select a different window. All right. Uh, zoom. See how do I stop screen share? Oh. Uh, there should be a. a uh, yeah, I'm looking for bottom center of your screen. Uh, there, there you now. go. Yeah, the other problem was I wasn't able to get on. Uh, I need to be able to get there without. No. Now if I go to that one, you don't see it, right? Now you'll, you'll need to share again. You need to click the green okay, button that says share screen. And that's, then you need to select the. Uh, uh, that's, uh, I may have screwed up forever. Let's see, share screen, don't. Yeah, let's share that guy. No, that's, 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 that's the debugging screen again. Yeah. Yeah, when I was successful, I didn't uh, choose a screen. Let's see, how do I unshare? Is there just an escape or something? Yeah. 
Don't seem to hear much. Here, I can see the button at the bottom here. center of your screen. Yeah. I'll stop it for you. I'll be damned. I'll, I'll bail. I'll just uh, stop Zoom. Well, I know George wanted to share something with everybody earlier. I don't think he found it. No, I have to look. I have to look tomorrow. Ah. Okay, I've got something that I can show. Um, I guess first what I'll do before I share this. Okay, so um, I was going through some old uh, boxes of films and I found this eight millimeter home movie here. Let me turn off my anaglyph. Okay, so I found this eight millimeter home movie uh, from Ken Films of Heckle and Jekyll's The Lion Hunt. Um, despite the fact that the box says full movie length cartoon, it's not, and it's in black and white, and it has no sound. Uh, but I threaded it up and took a look at what was on here, and the first couple seconds of the cartoon are very interesting, so I just wanted to share that. Uh, here, let me share the screen here. Okay, are you seeing the cartoon? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so Heckle and Jekyll have a stereoscope. I just thought that was uh, fantastic. Yeah, that's what it was. Fantastic. Thank you, Eric. What a find. There so you there you go. Okay. Great. Well, Susan has something. I think, that, so I think that's, well, you guys are going up next. So if you want to mix it in with your archive thing. Oh, okay. I think they're next, right, Eric? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, if you want to do your show and tell, and then we can, we can. Yeah, forward. it's yours. You, get, you have the next chunk. Do okay. with it as you please. <clears throat> Um, Susan, you you might, yeah, show and tells me. can be a minute each. Well, I'll go first because then Susan's going to do both. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can you spotlight them? Thanks. Well, I'll go first. Okay. This is a mini, a uh, tiny piece of what I'll be talking about on Sunday. So in 1858 the first book to ever have stereo pairs included in the book, and they were actual photographic pairs pasted in, was called Tenerife, an, Ex an Astronomer's Experiment. And uh, that was 1858. Uh, the book didn't come with a viewer. Uh, I don't know what people used at first, but within a year, 1859, Smith Beck and Beck, who made a box form stereoscope with lenses, uh, basically identical to this, uh, made a book stereoscope. So uh, this was designed to put down on a book, you know, on the two images. And this incorporates features that no stereo viewer for viewing books has ever incorporated ever since. One, it rests on the page and you can focus it. It has achromatic lenses. The lenses can be rotated to adjust for different center to center distances. The septum between the two images is frosted glass to reduce reflections. And there's a mirror behind to reflect light back down onto the page. So all of that, I don't believe anything like this has ever been incorporated into a viewer 
ever since. And it's you know, and it was made in England, again by Smith Beck and Beck. And uh, it's and Brian May's owl. It's Brian May's owl scope. A uh, hundred years later. 150 well, the, years later. The owl, there's plenty of viewers like the owl that were just lorgnettes. You know, you just hold it up and use it. But one that has achromatic this lenses, is super on the page, focuses, does everything that this does is, I think, pretty unique. And I'm not aware of any other viewer that incorporates all these features in one viewer from 1859. <laughs> David, you said so that you've the, got, the you've lenses got the change when you. Uh, I'm sorry. When you, when you rotate it, the lenses change. So um, is it is it decentered? So is I it guess a wedge? They must be. I mean, they have it's arrows. Lens. It, it somehow changes the. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you can adjust for the spacing, so they must be decentered in some way. So it's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's probably an acromat that's been cut off center. I guess, and you'd have to look up Smith, Beck, and Beck. Yeah. They made the exact same lenses were used on their other viewer was a box form mm -hmm. viewer that you know you put a mm -hmm. a stereo view into. Uh -huh. uh, but so there's so, somebody's uh, somebody's uh, uh, marketing opportunity. You've got the thing, <laughs> and you could you could make a 3D. Uh, printer of it. You know, you've got all the dimensions. You could make your well, 3D printing that, that yeah. thing. And, uh, it would not you being, personally, maybe not me, but no, not me, no. it would end up probably being as expensive. It would be something like the uh, ViewVaster. It probably would be a four hundred dollar viewer if you wanted to put really good lenses into it. Uh, but uh, anyway, that, that's my show and tell. I won't go longer on that unless there's <laughs> questions. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Uh, I don't. Hi. <laughs> Hello. I don't know. Uh, I like to start video down here. Done. I guess maybe I have to push Share that. Share your screen. Share your screen. There. I, I there we go. We a fifty-year member here. Right. Okay. Hey, I got something real quick for the for the show and tell. If it's okay, can I just squeeze this in? Of course, it's, it's okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Here we go. Uh, oops. Wrong side. Yeah. This uh, is available. Kung Fu Panda 3D at the uh, book off store in Lakewood. Uh, they got a, a, probably about eight or 10 of them left at a dollar 49. <laughs> so that is one heck of a good buy. This is a wonderful movie. If you don't have it, you should have it in your collection. Uh, so I do recommend uh, going down to book off in Lakewood. Uh, it's right across from the, uh, from Costco's, um, uh, what do you call it? Their refreshment stand right across the sidewalk from Costco. And uh, so if you're going to Costco, uh, book off is right there or uh, where you can get at it easily. And for buck 49, that's one heck of a bargain. And they're new. And <laughs> thank you. That's a great deal. I think you're ready for you, Susan. Okay, well, the next time you uh, decide to go out traveling somewhere, which of course nobody's going to, and you wanna take the Zeppelin uh, and you go to the gift shop, you wanna get your stereo viewer and your, your, pack, your pack of uh, stereo cards. It came with 17, came with 17 stereo cards and a little a little uh poor quality hulk poor quality zeppelin zeppelin viewer made out of the same material that the uh oh it has a hat on um that the uh <laughs> that the zeppelin was made out of which was what david duralumin duralumin like, what the, like, zeppelin, the zeppelin framework was made out of the same material uh, and so it folded aluminum, up aluminum type material it, folded yeah, so up. it folds flat it folds flat and goes into the little box but if you uh unfold it like so and put these things up <laughs> Where do you, uh, where so do you, the age of the uh, of the Graf Zeppelin was what the 1920s? Is that 30s. the age of this that's thing? That's from the 30s. The 1930s. 
yeah. uh, uh, early to mid thirties before the uh, before uh, the uh, Hindenburg blew up. And uh, show one of the views. Show the view. Yeah. Yep. Everybody got it. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, came with seventeen views. Uh, and it's a nice souvenir. Yep. Just needed to go in the gift shop. Is is now when I would show the uh, uh, Sheldon page. Uh, Steve, or should I wait with that? Sure. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. I thought I was muted. Uh, yeah, you want to do Sheldon. Let's do Sheldon. Uh, I'll say a little, I'll introduce my, a little bit about me and Sheldon just real quick to okay. start it up. But I kn I've known Sheldon for about 25 years. Uh, he passed away since Richmond, I think. Uh, so he passed away of cancer recently, and I have been talking to him up until the last few days as we, we both work for the census, and we were doing census talk. And he was really surprised when I emailed him. He didn't know I worked for the census. And uh, he, he was pretty happy the way I was popping up being promoted every few months. But uh, <laughs> he, he gave me a lot of tips uh, that were pretty helpful. And I checked on him and then he told me he was sick. So uh, uh, you know, I, I've had a few health issues myself, so I kind of knew where he was coming from. So it was good, but towards the end, it got very sad. So anyway, Susan. Um. David, you have to come back and tell me what to do. <laughs> okay. Hold on, guys. I have it up here, but I don't know what to do. I, I minimized this. Yeah, you don't, no, you don't want to minimize that. First, you have to click on screen share. Okay. And you pick Shelby. Uh, and you're going to show the video? Yeah. Okay. So there you go. All right, is everyone seeing that? Yep. Okay. Yeah. We're going to start with the video. Okay. Well, our own Barry Mitchell caught up with one man who has everything Viewmaster, a perfect story, we thought, for the toy's 65th anniversary. With Viewmaster, you can collect lots of reels on cards or get gift sets like Michael Jackson and Rainbow Bright. I'm Sheldon Aronowitz of Teaneck, New Jersey, and I have one of the largest Viewmaster collections in the world. I own uh, over 50,000 different Viewmaster reels, and there's a lot more than that, but, and I own about 1,000 viewers, hundreds and hundreds of other items relating to Viewmaster. I store it all in my ex-wife's attic, my ex-wife's double garage, four other garages, my apartment, my brother's house, friends' houses, all over. Did Viewmaster contribute to the breakup of your marriage? Well, I, I don't know. It could, uh, this is the best viewer Viewmaster ever made. Back in the 50s, of course, $9.95. Now, if you can find one in the $200 range. It's a focusing viewer, so you can focus it with this knob. It's internally lit by pushing this bar, and the lenses are of superior quality and enlarge the picture. Here we have a little smorgasbord of my 50,000-plus reel collection. Uh, here's an early reel, 1941 or 42, called a gold center reel of Las Vegas. Cost 35 cents back then, uh, $100 now if you could find it on eBay. But here, here we have the Honus Wagner of Viewmaster. This is a test set, one of two known, of the All in the Family TV show. Never went into production, probably because of legal reasons, worth in excess of two or $3,000 for sure. This is a 3D Viewmaster camera that I use to make my own Viewmaster reels of scenics, weddings, parties, whatever. And it has two lenses, as all 3D cameras do. Takes the same scene twice, simultaneously, from slightly different angle, just like your eyes. Sheldon, thanks for the tour. We have a little gift for you. The Viewmaster 65th Anniversary Gift Set. Like I don't already have one. Viewmaster? <laughs> <laughs> no. Happy 65th birthday. Oh, I 
loved it. <laughs> Wonderful. That's great. Uh, what a nice tribute. So on 3D Legends, we've got some, uh, we've got 3D images from all kinds of different people. And uh, you can see them either cross-eyed or parallel view here. And you can click on them. You can click on them and they go to a bigger size. Whoops, sorry. They go to a bigger size. And you can also download them if you want to own them. Or if you want to copy. So that it has uh, pictures by various people. Uh, for the past, these are go back to uh, the past 30 some years. There he is with Brian May. And that's his son, Michael, who is now a 43. Uh, that's right. What happened to his collection? Well, it's being sold off right now. Um, uh, his ex-wife and her husband are working with uh, Walter Sig. So Walter is going to be selling it off on eBay. And if you look at, at 3D Entertainment as the name on eBay, you can see the items for sale. And as you know, uh, you probably do know that Sheldon was associated with the uh, Ellis Island. And he could take anybody over to Ellis Island. He, he, he was the official 3D photographer for the National Park Service. Always a picture of and I didn't know that. We'll show the cards. Well, well, you'll you'll see if you keep on going here. There's a this is beautiful, picture. Susan. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is he wonderful. Was, he was just an amazing, wonderful, sweet, lovely, loving person. I already miss him every day. I know. And there I he is. So there he is with the cards. See. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and he passed away on August 21st, uh, just a few weeks ago. Oh boy. Okay. So, and, and if here are a couple of articles that uh, he wrote for Stereo World. And if you want to read them, they're wonderful. And you just click on the PDF and it'll come up and you can read them. Stop sharing, it's up here. Okay. So, and if you find, that you're looking through this and you think, you know, I have a picture of Sheldon, 3D or 2D, and you'd like to contribute it, just send it to me and I'd love to have it on this site. So you go to the bottom and you go back to the top. And there you are. So. Wow. Nice. Thank you. Nice job. Beautiful job. Thank you very Beautiful job. Much. Thank you. If you knew Sheldon, you loved Sheldon. He was just yep. the sweetest, most wonderful person in the world. I, I never met him, but I sure wish I had now after seeing your presentation. Well, well done. Thank you. Well, now you can meet him, Oliver. You, you probably, <laughs> yep. you, you went to some I can't energy. imagine you not meeting him, Oliver, especially <laughs> with the stereotype. No, I mean, Nobody I has missed the It just He was in both of the Orange people. County conventions. Oh, yeah. Right. He was there. Yeah. There are yeah. pictures of him in the stereo. Yeah, and and nobody who went to that convention would miss the stereo. No. Yeah. Right. I mean, it would be a crime, and I I, I, I know I would have dragged him through. If maybe he went okay. through when you weren't there. No, so but he. There are pictures possibly, of him yeah. there. Mm -hmm. So, you. I'm sure you met him, Oliver. Okay. So, uh, Oliver, while I got you, can you move the stereo to New Mexico? This <laughs> <laughs> is it's up in uh, Lancaster right now in the uh, garage of uh, uh, Jim. Uh, Jim, uh, oh, Jim's probably, uh, if we have it, Jim's going to go. So, uh, I think Look we got it. Mm -hmm. I'll put that in the literature. Maybe we'll make that the They'll logo. Probably sue me for copyright infringement. <laughs> if, if you notice, I'm wearing a uh, Albuquerque Isotopes. That's our minor league baseball. Mm -hmm. You used to live there. 
didn't you? Yeah, I, a short while. I was I was in Albuquerque in the Air Force. Okay, so uh, you're you're going to be co-chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Not much chance of that. Uh, fighting cancer right now in my head. I've got a. Uh, I think we got it all, but it was a squamous cell. Uh, oh, yeah. thingy and, uh, uh, and they dug it out and I think I'm, I'm fine, but it, it was a bit, a bit scary for a few days there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I have those, some issues too. So. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry to hear that. And all we're all, we're all getting there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get some young blood in here. <laughs> right. Right. Well, we have some. Yeah. More young blood. Can Anyways, I ask how, another, many, how many new members do you have, you guys? I think we got four or five, including you. Um, I, 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 I don't count. Um, yes, you um, do. <laughs> you're a member. At some point, you paid us and you became a member. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> no, 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 I know, I know, I know. But, um, well, you guys don't have live meetings anymore, right? Like, nobody does, right? This is live. I mean, like in real life. I like your mustache. <laughs> Thank you. It's really good. Yeah, it's real life. Oh, do it's we? Yeah, we can't have live meetings. Our venue is closed. And um, with the demographic of our, most of our members, we're not anxious to start them because. Um, hold on a second. Uh, is, is, is David Kunz on, on talking right now? I can. What? Oh, okay. Hey, what's up? Um, did <laughs> that girl, uh, uh, did, did Aly Alyssa from Norway um, uh, submit anything for you guys for the competition? She's not a member of our club, to my knowledge. And the yeah, that's the one not. thing. You can go to these meetings. We welcome anybody. You can go to every meeting you want without uh, being a club member. But to be okay. in the competition, you how much is a member. How much, how much is a membership? 30 I believe. Thirty dollars? Or yeah. forty for a couple. Forty for a couple, thirty dollars. Um we do actually have more for foreigns and she's in Norway, but now that we're not mailing we don't need to do that anymore. Yeah, it and used if you can to be more it, she's forens, better than you but it won't be for this. We'll take um, care of her if she wants to do it. Yeah, I could probably yeah. get you a bunch of new people if we can talk about maybe like not a one lump sum membership, maybe like a payment over time, or perhaps just a, um, a, a not 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 more for an outside member from an outside country, maybe even a little less for something like that. Um, but that's not up to me. That's obviously like your guys' pricing okay. structure. I'm just thinking I'm out loud. Formally inviting you to our next board meeting. Yeah, and uh, actually, oh. we welcome anybody who's a member or even non-members to come to the board meeting. The board meeting is the second you Tuesday of every month. I, 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 I literally need a, 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 David would have to like prompt me because like, yeah. you know, I, sure I, 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 I couldn't oh, even find oh, your website. Yeah. He had to like, give me a link. But the second, <laughs> well, that suggestion I, I just no posted longer... day yeah. of each month. I just, I just posted the link uh, mm -hmm. for anyone who wants to become a member. It's in the chat. So if you'd like yeah. to become a member, you can click the link there. It'll take you right to the club's membership page. Mm -hmm. So we prefer if you're a member, but I think we could probably have yeah. open it up so to I, the first yeah. hours to non-members. Like, or, 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 or maybe like a one-time sale because there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of talent in the new kids and uh, not even kids like, you know, like there, there's, there's a lot of new talent that, that, that really isn't being, um, uh, um, 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 what, what can I say? Like they're, they're not, they're, they're, they're only on Instagram and, and that's basically it. And um, they're very good. And um, I want to see somebody kick David's butt with like, you know, just like the neon signs and everything like that. Like I want I want I want to see one of these girls beat you. Okay. I'd like them to beat me, and then they will in into the competition too. Maybe you point. can give them. Is it okay if uh, if uh, David, if uh, we let her give your email out to these people? Well, they all <laughs> first of all, they all know me first of all already, um, so don't worry about that. Anyway, let's not get too far off topic. Other than the suggestion that we no longer need to charge more for foreign memberships, 
is a good one that probably should have occurred to us as soon as we stopped mailing out the news to people. We we don't. We only we only okay. have three kinds of memberships. Oh, we okay. have single membership for thirty, dual membership uh, for right. spouses and uh, significant and others for forty, and the uh, three receive the three D news by email with no other membership benefits for twenty. Those are the oh. only three that we offer. Uh, oh, so the email there's, there's... people. Oh, okay. So you have to pay fifteen for the extra competition. Oh, oh, so that's actually, that's actually, no, it's, um, no, I'm it's, sorry. It's, it's, it's 20 to get the newsletter without being able to enter competition 30. If you want to be able to enter the competition. Why do I feel like we're still in the and board that's, meeting? That's the <laughs> yeah. annual rate. And Let's keep it any, moving, any, folks. anyone, anyone who wants to, to, you can visit the link that's in the chat, all the information cool. about joining the club and the various levels is right there. So anyways, cool. we are welcoming people. We're opening up the board meeting. And that was a great, uh, that's a great lead into the competition itself. So why don't we go to David <laughs> mm -hmm. Why don't we? Okay, well, David, I have a question. Do those yes, rules we discussed at the board meeting apply to this competition? Not yet. Yes, they did, as a matter of fact. And one person did um, change their uh, group. And um, Carl and I both voluntarily. Uh, what are you looking at? participate okay. we, we entered but we are yes. not considered okay. okay so did you guys put yourself in b group no i'm muting um madam shifty there because she's babbling um uh no no we are just not you'll see our stuff but it won't go towards the awards or points it's as simple as that is there a competition tonight good and i might be entering this year then <laughs> there we go <laughs> Uh, let me just see if I can get us on the way. Is it Adam Booth today? It, it well, oh God, um, very good point. Um, you, do you have that other page? That's we have both, there, and so uh, Eric, if you will uh, put the um, link up because that's a good to give people a little bit of a heads up. Awesome. Yeah, we have uh, we have the whole competition is on the Three D Club website uh, using an HTML viewer, so that you can select uh, whatever viewing method you prefer. Uh, give me just a second. I'll get that link for you. Uh, so if you want to follow along, you can watch this on a 3D TV or a, a passive laptop, or uh, if you just want to be able to see them in full color uh, side by side with a lorgnette, you'll be able to do that as well. No cross-eyed option. Well, uh, the, the as HTML5 viewer has that. Yeah, the HTML5 viewer does let you do that. Uh, okay, I'm just pasting the link in right now. So if you go to that link that's in the chat, you'll be able to follow along in uh, various other formats. All right, and so I'll, um, I'll introduce the competition and everybody who wants to get themselves over to that HTML5 viewer and view it in whatever format they want. Like uh, Eric said, it supports everything. Uh, side-by-side -side squeezed for a 3D TV. You can uh, use it in an anaglyph. You can use it in parallel, cross-eyed, pretty much anything in between. So um, while he's doing that, I will, like I say, intro the thing. Uh, this is the first of our five regular club competitions. Tonight, uh, we have a virtual competition, so it has been already judged, and we'll see the results, and I'll read the scores as if they were just being given. Our judges were Ron Labby, of Maynard, Massachusetts, Gary Shacker from um, uh, San Diego, California, and Dennis Green from Detroit, Michigan. They are all um, highly decorated oh, and excellent stereographers in their own right. Okay. We good? We good? Am I moving right along? Certainly. All right, here we go. Our competitions have three possible categories. Standard, which is pretty much a uh, 3D image made with a camera, whether it was synchronized or a cha-cha. Computer generated, which we are not going to see any of tonight. And our final category is modified. That's a 2D to 3D conversion of some sort of artwork, whether it's a photo or a drawing or whatever, but it was not originated by the entrant. They've just done the conversion. We have two groups, advanced and beginner or A and B, maybe I shouldn't, uh, maybe I'll change this slide to not have that uh, appellation anymore. Um, and now finally, after a very, very long hiatus, we do have pe people in the B group. 
We have a five through nine scoring system. Five is worst, nine is best. I believe it's relatively self-explanatory. So here we go. I'm gonna show each image and then read the three judges score and the um, uh, total. So we'll start with the standard category. We'll see entries from both the A and B group. They'll be mixed together. You won't know who's who and you won't know who the makers are. Uh, you'll just see the images and hear the score. So get your glasses on and hopefully everybody's on the HTML5 site that wanted to be. Okay, here we go. Seven, seven, eight, 22. Six, eight, seven, 21. Six, seven, eight. Oh, sorry, I read that wrong. Six, seven, six, 19. Is there a theme? Did you mention the theme? The theme is hyper stereo. We'll be getting to that. They'll be shown separately at the end. This is Sheldon, six, seven, seven, 20. What? Five, six, seven, 18. That's can I ask my various moderate co-hosts to uh, appropriately mute people? <laughs> All right, here we go. Eight, nine, seven, 24. Seven, seven, six, 20. Five, seven, six, 18. Six, seven, seven, twenty. Seven, eight, eight, twenty three. Six, 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 eighteen. Five, 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 fifteen. Eight, nine, eight, twenty five. Six, eight, seven, twenty one. Seven, nine, seven, twenty three. Seven, eight, seven, twenty two. Six, eight, six, twenty. Six, seven, seven, twenty. Seven, 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 twenty one. Seven, 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 twenty one. Eight, nine, nine, twenty six. Seven, seven, eight, twenty two. Six, eight, six, twenty. Seven, eight, eight, twenty three. Seven, 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 twenty one. Eight, nine, nine, twenty six. Six, eight, seven, twenty one. Seven, eight, six, twenty one. Six, seven, six, nineteen. Five, eight, six, nineteen. Five, eight, six. Holy moly, I just noticed that. Six, eight, six, twenty. 
That is not a valid comment. Five seven seven nineteen. <laughs> Nine eight seven twenty four. Seven eight seven twenty two. Seven six seven twenty. Seven 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 twenty one. Eight eight nine twenty five. Seven 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 twenty one. Nine nine eight twenty six. Seven 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 twenty one. That was the standard category. We'll now see the modified images. 788, 23. 698, 23. 677, 20. Six six seven nineteen eight 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 twenty four seven seven eight twenty two five eight seven twenty. Six eight six twenty. That was the modified category. Now we'll see all the images without scores that were entered for the Hyper Stereo Theme Award, and then at the end we'll hear which one of those was chosen. You'll see all these images. You'll see are from the standard category. You've already seen them once, but now you will see them uh, as a group for the theme category. So I'll just run through them. The category is hyper stereo. I feel like somebody should be doing the, the Jeopardy music. Da 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 da. This was a very popular category. And uh, thank you to Carl Wilson, who gave new life to the theme award by suggesting some very good categories for me this year. I would starting to run a little, uh, little low on uh, creativity for these themes. This is, I think, probably the most popular one we've ever had in terms of the total number of entries for it. Very popular. Okay, that was the hyper stereo. So now, uh, amazingly, I've worked very quickly behind the scenes there and I've already tabulated all the scores, amazingly. So now we're gonna see the winners from tonight's competition. First, we have the A group modified category. We only have A group for modified. We don't have any B group. There are two HMs, they got 23 points each. The first is Thousand Pound Bombs by David Richardson. And next is Yacht Flyover by Perennial Modified Group winner, Jim Long. Finally, Jim's getting a little bit of competition. And the award 
in the A group modified category, 24 points. Cars made her lightning McQueen by Jim Long. In the B group standard category, the HM with 21 points went to Andrew Park for clouds in your eye. And the award also went to Andrew Park with 22 points for still empty SoFi Stadium. In the A group standard category, the honorable mention went to Barry Rothstein for Harlequin Feast with 25 points. And the award went to Lee Pratt for Bass Harbor Head Lighthouse with 26 points. And that's it for our competition. Uh, you might notice that some images that scored quite well may not have appeared. Those were all Carl Wilson's. How about the hyper? Oh, sorry. I, 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 I know why I screwed up on that because I was supposed to simply leave it on this because this one not only won the um, uh, A group standard category, it also won the hyper award. That's why I don't have it in there twice. It's the same image. So this uh, was the hyper award winner. Again, Lee Pratt, Bass Harbor Head Lighthouse, 26 points. Thank you for reminding me of that, David. Thank you. Good job, David. Uh, can you tell us what the secret the categories are coming up real quick? Um, I can by going to our website and looking it up since I don't know them off the top of my head. Why don't you share your screen and okay. show them where to find it? LA3Dclub.com. If it's not too much work. Yeah, I don't think it is. Let's While he's doing that, uh, I'll uh, like to talk about this Sunday, Eric Kerwin is doing a movie thing for 3D space. And I go to these regularly. They're done on YouTube. Uh, there's very little. I do them directly from my, actually from my cable station. Sorry about that. <laughs> I guess they didn't think much of that. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, my cable <laughs> thing has a thing that goes directly to YouTube. So it's full broadband. And I never get any video lag or anything. So if you have Cox cable or some of the other cable ones, you can do that. <laughs> or yeah, this, can, this uh, Sunday, this Sunday, I've got uh, a pair of thanks. science fiction <laughs> films. Um, uh, one is called My Robot. It's from 2012. It's a Korean film, eight minutes long. Uh, dealing with the profound questions of life and death based on the relationship between a man and a humanoid robot. And the second film is called Hard Reset. Uh, it's uh, 36 minutes, produced in the USA. It was actually a graduate film at the University of Texas in Austin, directed by Deepak Chetty. And uh, it's a, a very Blade Runner-like story of uh, um, uh, a man with a... a a relationship with an android. So uh, both really interesting films. I will put the link in the chat and uh, that is at 2 p.m. this Sunday Pacific time. Great. You can see I've posted the, the um, uh, themes there. I actually don't know where they have to find them on the website, but we will make them more prominent. The next one is pretty darn yeah, easy to remember. So it's, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, so the next one's easy to remember because it's Halloween themed, spooky, scary. So right. anybody will have trouble with that. All righty. What's up? What's next? Um, Let me unmute. Nemus? Oh, yeah, we got our show and tell. Person. I thought we go in an yes. anemus Hi. thing next. Yes. So we got a few show and tells already. Mm -hmm. Valerie. Yes. Uh, Great. Can... There's two things I want. Yeah, we'll... Don't we do an anemus thing yet? Next. We'll do we'll do more oh, show and tells wow. at, at, at the Sorry. end. Yeah, we have we have a special guest here today. Love That's um, why I let everybody speak. So uh, go ahead. Valerie, you're up after Nima. And 
uh, Eric. So yeah, so so I uh, I'd I'd like to introduce Nima Zagami. Nima uh, runs the the Hollow Picks uh, program at uh, Leia Labs. Leia Labs is a, a company that produces displays for three D light field glasses free viewing. And I'm going to turn things over to Nima, and he can tell you a, a bit about what's going on at Leia Labs. Everyone, so um, as Eric mentioned, uh, I work at Leia and we make a variety of different products. Um, so we have worked on the Red Hydrogen One. We made the screen for the platform as well as the software, the app store, um, the camera software. Uh, and then now we, we're now manufacturing our first product that's entirely our own, which is called LoomPad. So we've done all the manufacturing, the operating system, uh, all the software. We're light field first. Uh, one of the ways that you can think about it is if there's stereo displays and auto stereo displays, we're an auto multiscopic display. So instead of just having two views, there are many views um, that you can see when you look at our devices. Uh, I don't know how many of you have played around with the Red Hydrogen One, but if you have, uh, I manage the Holopix program on there. Uh, we have a, a variety of different versions of the application. Um, and, but all of them are effectively for 3D photo viewing. Uh, right now it's loading. It might take a, take a second to load everything. I don't know how easy it is for you guys to see it. Um, but ultimately, uh, we have multiple view configurations in our displays. And one of them that is our primary one that we're shipping our products on is called 4View. So 4View is actually 16 views, so it's a little bit uh, uh, misleading. But we only turn on 4 views at a time, but you can rotate the display. So if it's in landscape, you get four views that are uh, duplicated four times upwards. And if it's in portrait, it's also the same way, uh, four times uh, duplicated upwards. Um, I would like to talk to you guys about our products, including Holofix uh, and uh, LoomPad. So to do that, I'm actually gonna share my screen with you and I'm gonna show you the LoomPad website um, so you guys can see what we have coming up. Um, there we go. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah, yeah, it's up. Yes. Awesome. So as it says, LoomPad is the world's first 3D light field tablet. Obviously there have been other 3D tablets, but this is the first light field tablet. Um, our technology, it spun out of a, uh, a paper that was published in Nature. Uh, MIT Technology Review has done some pretty good stuff about it. Um, but you'll be able to see all the different things that LoomPad does. Uh, so this is just a, this is a rendering of the LoomPad um, and yeah, it's, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a fun little thing. There's a video that you guys can watch that has our uh, CEO there talking about the product. Um, it, this talks about our different technologies. The DLB, the diffractive light field backlight, is our core technology that causes the light field image to show. Uh, so originally, the oldest auto stereo technology is lenticular. Lenticular is over a century old, as I'm sure all of you know. Uh, but then there was a newer one called Parallax Barrier, which is very popular. Uh, one of the Fujifilm cameras used it, as well as the Nintendo 3DS. That's a very great technology, um, but we think diffractive light field backlighting is the future. It has a lot of really great benefits over both of those technologies. Uh, one of it is that when you turn off the backlight, you get full high resolution 2D, unlike both parallax barrier and lenticular, in which your 2D experience uh, is that the resolution is cut in half um, for the sake of a 3D experience. Um, we can also rotate our displays, which is pretty unique as well. So it works in both landscape, portrait, uh, on both sides. So it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, and then of course, it has both vertical and horizontal uh, views. However, we don't turn that on in the displays that we're shipping. So it's only four view, but we might do that in the future. There's a lot of really interesting things that we're trying to do with LoomPad, because LoomPad, uh, I'm the product manager of LoomPad Creators Edition. And for creators, we wanted to create a lot of ways for people to make their content something that can be 3D. So even if they have had no experience with 3D content in the past, we can help them create it. So drone aerials is a really good example of that. We have a new tool coming out called Lightfield Studio, which I'm also the product manager of. And with Lightfield Studio, you can take any drone that you've had that has a camera on it, and you can shoot vertical, or sorry, horizontally on your drone. Just have your drone start recording, move it horizontally. Then you take that clip and drop it into Lightfield Studio for the Mac and it will convert into a, light, a 3D light field video. And it looks absolutely incredible. So I uh, can't wait for you guys to see that. We think there's a lot of places that um, 
Loom pad's very useful in business as well. So we think for product shots, it's absolutely unmatched. Uh, if you own a restaurant, you could put it in the window, have it just looping on, on 3D pictures of your food. It looks really stunning. Same thing with retail is another place where we're looking at. Um, obviously, there's pictures and videos. It has a 3D camera built into it. The 3D camera will let you take photos and videos. Um, and we're pretty excited about that. Uh, there are animations that you can do. So anything that's CG rendered, uh, we have a Blender SDK on the way. We already have a Maya uh, plugin that can use the Arnold render to create CG content. Um, 3D models, we support all kinds of 3D models. Uh, you can get them off Sketchfab, you can make your own in Blender or any product. And you just drop the model onto the app and the Leia viewer will play it back. Um, and then of course games. So we have the Leia Loft App Store, which is where you get all of your apps and updates from. We have over 50 games that will be available on the day that it launches. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, if you go here, it just goes through different partners. So this is a medical technology company that um, has used our SDK and they really like their experience. Um, if you go here, it tells you about all the apps that are coming out for the device. So there's Lightfield Studio, which is the app that I told you, it comes out on Mac OS, allows you to convert a variety of different types of content. If you have pre-existing SPS content, it'll reconverge it to be perfectly uh, comfortable on our display. Um, it will convert 3D video into Lightfield video. And it will also do uh, the drone footage as well as uh, something we call horizontal uh, linear video, which is basically if you have a ring of cameras like in the matrix and you shoot them all at the same time, you can put that into our player and then you can have a super high resolution uh, photo slash video that you're able to swipe between and it'll rotate it uh, in a circle. And that's similar to what you see uh, up here. This is actually something that, that was captured uh, at a stage uh, by a company called Sebring. And so Sebring, this is actually has rings all around it. And this is actual content that ships with LoomPad that you can just, you can view this content, you can scrub it back and forth in real time in 3D. So we're pretty excited about all that. Um, there's our SDKs. Uh, the SDKs are for you know, every uh, imaginable system you can think of. We've got an Android native SDK. We've got a Unity SDK. Unreal SDK is coming in the next couple months. Uh, this is the camera. This is Holopix, which is a social network for 3D photos. Um, you can post, you can comment, you can like, you can bookmark. Uh, we believe it's the largest 3D photo um, network in the world. It's bigger than Ferio, bigger than uh, uh, Stereopix. Um, based, based specifically on how much content is being uploaded per day. So if we're going off daily engagement and daily uploads is the biggest, I think it might still technically be smaller than Ferio, but I'm not even sure about that. We might, we might have um, leaped past them since we have people posting uh, 50 to 100 uh, new pieces of content every single day. Um, this is for Leia View, which lets you see all the different uh, uh, like models, like 3D models. This is the Leia Loft App Store. Um, this is Leia Viewer, which lets you play back any photos and videos, including SBS content. We are almost close to committing to doing MPO in the future, too. Um, and then this is going to be uh, Leia Show, which is a, uh, it's a slideshow application for the tablet, uh, which allows you to select all your photos, and it turns the tablet into a photo frame that you can just leave somewhere, and it'll just start going between all of the beautiful 3D photos that you've taken. We're pretty excited about the product. Here it talks more about the tools and the tools that are coming soon, including um, Adobe Tools, SolidWorks, Autodesk, and of course, Unreal Engine. Uh, and then here we've got a bunch of guided tours, including photography, the games, retail, et cetera. Here it just talks about the company, which yeah, that stuff doesn't really matter too much. And it answers questions. If you go to the pre-order page, it'll let you kind of get more hands-on with the product. So LoomPad's $1,000 and you can, uh, Basically, this is, allows you to like interact with it right here so you can see the product from every uh, possible angle. We have two colors that are coming. So this is the champagne beige color that's coming. Uh, the standard color ships in October, but champagne beige ships in November. Um, so moon gray is the, the standard color. Um, and then you can also look at the tech specs as well. Uh, as a special treat, everyone who uses the code NIMA, which is just N-I-M-A, will get $100 off the loom pad if you're interested in that at all. Uh, we also have some other accessories that might be uh, interesting to people. I think you guys probably don't care too much about the case, but the loom stand is something that's very interesting because uh, something that we create is called our static hologram technology. And what this little thing that's sticking out is, is one of our static holograms, which we've never productized before. It's only been in the lab until now. But if you buy the loom stand, you'll get this static hologram. 
what a static hologram is, is it's exactly what you think of when you think of a pre-existing, uh, like the holograms that you capture with lasers, but this is all done digitally and synthetically. These have um, an unlimited number of views. Uh, they are done digitally, they're imprinted in glass. They're static, they cannot be changed, so they're not um, dynamic, you can't change what it is. But this one, you, from every angle you look at it, it is sticking multiple inches off the glass in the real world. So th this picture actually is not doing, doing it justice at all. Um, if I was to, to kind of uh, show you, I think that this logo would actually be closer to like here, or maybe, maybe here, I'm not really sure how to describe it, but it would be much, much further out than, um, than what you're expecting. And static holograms are, are really kind of incredible. Uh, of course, our pre-existing apps like Holopix, uh, they run on LoomPad as well. Uh, and your content, including movies and photos, will as well. And we have a lot of creator tools that are coming, which will let you even take 2D photos and put the 2D photos onto, um, uh, yeah, basically, you could put 2D photos and they'll automatically convert to light field. We also have another product coming out very soon, uh, next week, actually, which is called Holopix Converter. And that will let you guys go to a website, which is going to be convert.holofix.com. It's not up yet, but once you go to that website, it will allow you to upload any 2D photo that you have, edit the depth map, and pop it out as a 3D GIF. Um, and so you can share with anybody. So we think that's something that people are gonna be interested in. And yeah, those are kind of our products that are coming out in the near term. And then long term in a few months, we're also gonna release Holofix on 2D devices. So that's gonna be Android and iOS which then allows people to capture things with the LoomPad um, and then uh, be able to share them with people on any device. Um, I actually have a LoomPad right here with me. So uh, if you have any questions, I'll be able to show it to you. This is not a final model of it, so there's no logo on the back. However, all the software and the hardware is uh, up to date. So uh, there's a lot of applications that will ship with it, including Leia Show and others. So yeah, this is what LoomPad looks like and it's a real thing and it's coming next month and we're excited for people to try it. I think at this point, I'd like to open it up for questions in case there's anything that I, uh, I've missed at this point and thank you guys for, for listening. Well, th thanks so much, Nima. Uh, what, what operating system is it shipping with? We're shipping with Android 10. Android 10, okay. Um, I have and a question. Let's see, there's there are a few questions. Yeah, Val on Valerie. The, uh, okay, sure. Uh, um, yeah. What would sway you to support MPO file formats? That's a great question. Um, ultimately, in the past with Hydrogen, we found that the even though the 3D enthusiast community was interested in the product, it was outside of their price range, and they just generally didn't adopt it for a variety of reasons. Maybe it's the small interaxial. Maybe it's because they weren't sold on multiscopic displays compared to stereoscopic displays. But because 3D enthusiasts didn't buy it, they were such a small fraction of the total user base that it wasn't worth our time or energy um, to add that support. I would say if even 200 people in the 3D enthusiast community bought it and made, you know, we had 10 or 20 paying customers who said we want MPO support, MPO support would be there within weeks. Like we would, we would just add it like that. It really just comes down to what is the number one thing people are asking for. Right now, most of our requests from people who've pre-ordered are around video, not photos. So if, if um, there were other people asking for MPO support who are pre-order customers, we would assuredly do it within weeks. There's a question in the chat uh, wondering if any of the upcoming Leia apps will be available for hydrogen users or are they LoomPad only? That's a great question. A lot of that's actually up to me. Uh, the Leia Show app, which will turn the device into a digital photo frame is going to also come to hydrogen. Uh, the 2.1 version of uh, Holofix, which is designed around LoomPad, has some really cool features like our new Discover page. That one is actually going to beta tomorrow, and that will also be available for hydrogen. Um, Lightfield Studio uh, also uh, is from, it's still for Mac OS, but the content that you create um, will uh, basically, that, that will also work on hydrogen. So. I think pretty much everything works on hydrogen. In fact, there's one or two apps like Aura uh, and maybe two games beyond that that are hydrogen exclusive that just don't work on LoomPad for one reason or another. Um, but everything else should be pretty much identical. I can't really, uh, the new Leia Cam app is hydrogen exclusive. So the camera app and all of the updates that we're doing 
are hydrogen exclusive because we don't control the camera on hydrogen. And so unfortunately the camera will never be updated for hydrogen beyond this point. Um, so yeah, I would say that's the only major thing. We are planning on supporting hydrogen for as long as we can, but again, hydrogen's not our product, it's Red's product, Red's canceled it. Um, I would say sometime in 2021, we'll probably drop support, but it won't stop working. We'll just stop adding things and um, updates might freeze on it. So updates at a certain point that come to Holofix may not come to hydrogen. But again, I, I mean, I'm the manager for Holofix. So as long as we can support hydrogen, as long as there's not something that pops up that is like a huge incompatibility. Like for example, if there's a new API that would make, make Holofix like five times faster, but if we add that API, it doesn't work on hydrogen then we drop hydrogen support. But until something like that happens, I will do my best for all of my apps to support both platforms. But definitely, definitely expect it through at least, let's say Q2 2021, at the minimum, everything will be supported on both products. Oh, I had a question. Uh, you mentioned, you mentioned uh, that you had an article in Nature. Uh, could you send the uh, reference? Yeah, that's, that's a great point. Give me two seconds and I will um, get that going. Uh, yeah, I'm a subscriber. It is, here we go. I am going to drop this one in the chat. And- uh, Can you show it to us maybe? I'm gonna just send the link here and then anyone who's interested, uh, if you reach out to uh, help at layinc.com. We'll just give you the paper for free as a PDF. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, let me see. Are there any okay. other I've, I've, I've got two questions. Yeah. Uh, one, you, you mentioned uh, the Mac application. Uh, will there be a Windows version for us PC users? Yes. Um, that has been the thing that I've been pushing for the most. Um, I think that to give you guys some insider information. Basically, there is a variety of features that we're working on. So I had mentioned we're adding uh, the new uh, horizontal content conversion, which lets you take 2D content that's shot horizontally, which doesn't have to be from a drone, by the way. If you have a slide rail, if you have anything, you can turn that into a, into a, a light field video. Um, and so we're adding those features, and those have to be there by the time we launch. But the big thing stopping the Windows port is that the CEO wants us to finally release our 2D to Lightfield video conversion tool. And that would go into Lightfield Studio as well. So right now I'm pushing, let's do the Windows port first and then work on that feature. He's pushing the other way. So we'll see what happens, but um, from- Only bringing that up because uh, uh, so many of us stereo photographers um, use Stereo Photo Maker on our images and many of us are, are Windows based already in the, the 3D photography world. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally understand. Um, I know that it will more than double the usage of Lightfield Studio if we add Windows support. Uh, but uh, again, there's many factors involved when yeah. we decide what we can do. Uh, I do think that you will hope, you if you don't get Windows support by the end of the year, it will definitely come to Lightfield Studio for sure Q1 2021 at the very, very least. And, and I, I should also, I should, Thank you for sending a Hydrogen One to Misuji Sudo. Uh, Misuji has recently added uh, Hydrogen support to Stereo Photo Maker. Um, uh, you can, I believe you can now process a four view image from your stereo images in SPM and then send them over to the Hydrogen. Uh, let's see, there's a question in the chat. Uh, what, what are the measurements of the display? Um, the display is a 10.8-inch uh, uh, display. Yeah. All the specs are available okay. on, uh, on the website. 10.8-inch display. Uh, someone asked, are there any spec differences between um, hydrogen and loom pad? And the answer is yes. Uh, this has a newer processor. It has more storage. Um, it uses um, a newer USB-C specification. Uh, it's got some additional sensors. It has a time of flight sensor on the front camera. Uh, instead of a, So instead of a stereo camera on both sides, it has a mono camera plus a time of flight sensor on the front, uh, which is kind of similar to, you can think of like the Apple TrueDepth camera. 
Um, we think there's a lot of interesting things we can do there. It's much lower power, uh, which means that at some point in the future when we update the device's firmware, you'll actually be able to get head tracking on the device. And any 3D photo that you've had, you'll start seeing new angles. You'll be able to peek around the photos that you've already taken, see behind people. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, let's see. Question. There's a question. Uh, Valerie says the web the web page looks yeah. awesome. Uh, where's the company based, and where are you having the tablets manufactured? Yeah. So further down on the web page, it actually has the um, it shows where our different locations are uh, of the company. So Leia's headquarters is in Menlo Park, California. So that's where HQ is. That's where I'm based. We actually have two HQ offices in Menlo Park. Um, but uh, due to COVID, we're obviously not there. Um, we also have another nano center, which is at HP Labs in Palo Alto, which is where we spun out of. So it was actually, we were actually originally based in HP when the Nature article was written. And then uh, we spun out of HP and it started the company. Um, it was founded by uh, David Fatal, uh, Jen Peng, uh, Pierre, Pierre something, <laughs> and Sonny Vo. Uh, and we have a, um, and the nano center is still there. So when, where the initial nanophotonic design is happening for each of the backlights and where the imprinting happens for the masters, that's still happening at the nano center. We have uh, the Leia Loft team, which manages the app store and our content. They're based in Los Angeles. Uh, they're a pretty small team. Uh, our smallest team is based in New York. It's just one person in an office who does our video content. Uh, we have a team in New Zealand who is doing our CGI and 3D art, uh, as well as working on our, uh, our automotive work because our displays are coming to cars in the next couple of years. Uh, and then we also have our two teams in China. We have a Shanghai team, which is focused on education. Um, and so they create uh, educational content for the Chinese market primarily, where there's already uh, tens of thousands of orders for LoomPad. Um, and then we also have a team that is in Shuzhou, which is near Hong Kong. And that is where the tablets are actually being manufactured and the displays are being assembled, uh, et cetera. So we were kind of a distributed team, but um, as far as current companies working in the 3D space, it seems like we're one of the, the largest and most uh, primed for success. So that's pretty awesome. You mentioned um, Holopix for Android for 2D phones uh, that'll allow people who are using the, the four view format to share their images with people who don't have a device. Uh, how's that gonna work? And when, when do you expect that'll be available? Uh, what, what, what kind of viewing will people on a 2D phone, what will they see? Yeah, um, so this is kind of a complicated uh, answer, very complicated. Um, Eric, you already have uh, access to the beta or alpha on your device, correct? Uh, I don't think I do yet. Okay. Um, so we use a technology called depth tilt technology, which basically we take the images and then we generate a depth map and then create um, an, kind of an infinite amount of simultaneous views uh, between the object. Obviously, the further you go from the center, the higher of a chance there is for errors to be thrown in, but you can tilt around the device and feel the depth of it. On some displays like the, uh, like let's say that like the newest Samsung phones because of the high color quality, high resolution, uh, if you're moving the device, your brain actually gets tricked into seeing stereo. Uh, definitely does not work on all devices, does not work on lower quality devices, but it's a very compelling effect, uh, better than Facebook 3D photos for sure. Um, and we also support 2D photos. So if you take a picture with an iPhone or another, uh, any 2D photo, once you upload it, we'll be able to generate our depth maps through 2D to 3D conversion, and then from 3D to depth tilt. Now, Kind of the problem is, is that I'm pretty happy with the quality. Eric, you've seen it on my phone. I, I think most of the stuff I show people seems pretty good, but internally it hasn't hit our quality bar. So we're kind of taking it back to not, not the drawing board, but we're definitely going to spend a couple months at least making the quality significantly better before we start rolling out to beta and then later to the wider community. So um, we were originally going to launch by October or November, uh, and now it's looking more like sometime between December and February, if I'm just giving rough estimates, but I don't wanna make promises anymore because I already told people it was coming out and 
the app is ready. It's just, um, I think we want to make sure it hits the Leia bar of quality, which is a little bit higher than um, my personal 3D enthusiast bar of quality. Let's see, uh, there's a question in the chat. Is the tablet able to display 3D Blu-ray movies? Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting question. Um, 3D Blu-ray is a, an HDMI standard and this does not have HDMI in. So you can't just plug a Blu-ray player into the device and do that. Uh, we did consider it, or I should say I pushed for it. Um, if we do a monitor device, which might happen in the next few years at some point, uh, then that is probably where we'd support that. Uh, if the HDMI consortium still allows people to do that. If you go to the HDMI consortium and look for Blu-ray 3D players, you'll notice the number of players has dropped off substantially. I actually don't believe there's been a Blu-ray 3D compatible player that was released this year at all. Um, 2019 might've been the last one and there's only one that uh, was released in 2019 if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but if Is we that can- the US or anywhere? I think China makes them. Um, China may be making stuff that's not uh, sanctioned, uh, but- oh, okay. I, I can't believe that would happen. <laughs> yeah, the consortium lists all the devices that are compatible that they have uh, signed off and released, and it doesn't seem like they're doing that anymore. Uh, I've tried to reach out to them a few times, and it's pretty difficult to get conversations going. But anyways, um, what you can do instead is any SBS, including a Blu-ray 3D rip, will play on this device, no problem. So that, that includes, you know, any movie that you have, as long as you have a way to rip it, uh, it'll play flawlessly. Um, we have scenes from Coco that look really, really great on this device. Does it have to be half and half squeezed or can it be full resolution? Oh, I mean, I, I'd, I'd strongly recommend full resolution. It supports half, okay. but um, yeah, half width does work, but I strongly recommend full resolution. So okay. 1080p SPS plays back no problem. Yeah, uh, what so about it's not 1080, it's double that then, right? Say that again? So when you make a file that's actually side by side, it would be wider than Correct. standard. Okay. Correct. Great, thanks. I also uh, want to- What about- Sorry, uh, sorry, Eric, just yeah. real quick. Is it compatible with- Yeah, with yeah. So- That's what I was just about to ask, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, internally, there was a tool that we made that worked with one of the Lytro cameras and it worked okay, but in general, Lytro's resolution is just poor. So it would, it's just not a great experience when you view it in light field because each of the individual views that you capture in a Lytro camera is just not great. I, I would just recommend instead take high resolution, as high of a resolution as you can, 3D photos, and then our algorithms will just create additional views for you. And I think that's a significantly better experience than what we got out of Lytro. Sounds good. So uh, why don't we? Uh, sorry, I'm willing to answer more questions, but if we're if we're going to wrap up, that's that's fine too. It's a no, we, we've, more, got, we've no, got, go got we've got we've got a few more questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. We'll do the ones uh, we have now, and then there's a question. Can you, can you stay later after we do? I think we have some show and tells, and then we can go back to your things. Yeah, well, sure. we've got we've got go we've ahead. got a couple more questions in the chat. Uh, there's a mm -hmm. question about. Um, when you load a side-by-side -side stereo movie, does it generate a depth map for that uh, and expand it into multi-view? That's a good question. Um, so no, actually. Um, so if you're doing, there's a few ways to, to talk about this. So if you just load any SBS, meaning even if you download directly from the internet to the loom pad and SBS video, uh, what we do is we have a technology called Go4V, which is both on hydrogen and loom pad. And what that's doing is it's using, it's not machine learning, it's just a, a very interesting mathematical equation that can identify the, the delta between the pixels in each of those views and generate the light field on the fly. There's no depth map being made at all. It's basically just taking those two views, pushing pixels around in additional views, and then boom, you've got the light field image. If you, however, take an SBS and run it through Light Field Studio, then there is gonna be a depth map generated internally which creates much cleaner multi-view light field videos that pop out on the other side. Long-term, I will definitely be wanting to expose video depth maps and letting people hand paint them. The big problem is, and, and I've talked about this internally, 
outside of Hollywood, no one does that. There's definitely enthusiasts that do like, like image depth map painting, but nobody does it for videos. And I mean, we could spend time on it and, and maybe we will. And I think that makes sense, especially if uh, it becomes a huge market for us, if Loompad sells really well, or there's future devices, et cetera. But um, how many people are going to use it? Even in the 3D community, I can't imagine more than what, like 50 people, 100 people are going to be painting, hand painting depth maps um, and, and fixing and editing depth maps for video. So uh, we'll see that. Uh, is there a limit on SPS video resolution? Um, yes, I believe we were able to, we topped out at dual 4K 60 FPS. Please don't quote me on that. Um, there also might be a, uh, a depending on, on where you are, you could overheat the device if you do that, which isn't going to cause a problem, but it just makes the frame rate start to stutter if you're running like a, if an SBS 4K 60 FPS stream, it'll like work for, you know, five or 10 minutes. But if you somehow have a movie at that resolution and frame rate, it's definitely going to get stuttery at some point. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, if you're running 1080p, uh, dual 1080p SBS 60 FPS, no issues at all, which is really the, even that's higher than the, the quality of most content that people have. Most people have 24 FPS. Um, uh, Jim I, Frazier. I think we've, yeah. Yeah, Jim Frazier raised his hand. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, uh, I have a question about the Hydrogen One. Uh, normally when you're in the four view mode, you're taking the horizontal screen resolution and dividing that by four for the display of each of those four images, those two left-right serial pairs, correct? That's a very interesting question, Jim. I'm actually going to surprise you. We actually divide the image by 16. 16. Oh. What we're actually doing, and it's, it's very complicated, but the true resolution of each view is 1 16th of a 1440p display. However, what we're also doing is we're duplicating those four images four times upwards which in a sense gives you four times the resolution, but not really because it's the same low res uh, image four times. However, we have post processing on top of that in which we're taking those images and we're doing sub pixel rendering and we're basically moving around each of those pixels slightly so that there's kind of a virtual image that is a higher resolution due to that sub pixel rendering. And then on top of that, we have additional post processing that's run on that, um, which is kind of similar to anti-aliasing, et cetera. And due to the fact that it's light field and not stereo, your eyes are actually seeing parts of the neighboring views. So when you're looking at views two and three uh, right there, your left eye sees some of view one and some of view three, and then your right eye sees some of view two and some of view four, and your brain fuses all that together. So the actual apparent um, pixel resolution, uh, if you have healthy eyes and you're holding the device at the right distance on hydrogen one, feels somewhere between 720p and 1080p, uh, even though the actual true per view resolution is closer to 200p. Uh, it's more than that, but you know, it's, it's, uh, it seems significantly higher. And then on LoomPad, I would say it looks pretty much like 1080p 3D all the time. So there uh, how wide is the, uh, the uh, sweet spot? <clears throat> how, how wide is, that, is the sweet spot for that? To... It, it, Kind of depends um, because it depends on what you mean by sweet spot. It's definitely much larger than lenticular displays and you'll be able to see that pretty easily, but you're also holding it further away. Um, and then you can move, I would say like, I mean, I could, uh, let me grab my loom pad real quick and I'll just do it for you and I'll, I'll show you, um, I will show you how far it goes before you hit the, uh, the view. We call it the, um, the view jump, which basically there is view inversion at one spot. And then the views actually duplicate again, so you can see 3D again, which means like three people. Yeah, each be yeah like, I can see looking at this right now, there's, there's four separate sweet spots moving across the screen. So let me pull this one up and I will tell you how far I can go on each side. Now, right now it is, I'm at, this is, I, I put the loom pad right onto my MacBook, so that's how far away it is. I'm looking at the dead center, it's perfectly 3D. I go to, here it switches views and then here is where it goes into view inversion and then if i go here up until here is when it goes into view inversion and then when i go past the view inversion which is right here 
Now I'm in a completely new view and it's also perfectly 3D and there's four views there as well. So that's pretty um, good. Yeah, each of, each of them is uh, at a different spot. I will say one of the things with our display that not everyone is super excited about is it is designed, for example, Loompad, it's designed to be held like a full like arm's length away. When you get close to it, it's, it's not designed for IPD of, of people very sp with small eyes. Like this is how we were able to, we basically designed it around being able to support lots of different IPDs. And to do that, the sweet spot and in distance is a bit further than what people are used to with lenticular devices and parallax barrier devices, if that makes sense. Sorry for uh, being confusing. I, I just wanted to follow up on that, that first question about the four view display. Um, so there's a 2D ver mode of the display and there's a four view mode of the display and there's nothing in between, correct? That is correct. However, because we have gotten a lot more interest from 3D enthusiasts um, on LoomPad than we did with hydrogen, we are strongly, strongly considering turning on a pure stereo uh, version of the display. So what we would do there is we would be duplicating the, so instead of view, like view two and three, it would be view one and two are the same and view three and four are the same. Uh, and by doing that, that reduces crosstalk to almost nothing. So even in like the worst scenes, it's perfectly, perfectly clear with no crosstalk. And then it also allows you to go much, much deeper because right now we want the views to be close to each other so when you're jumping, when you go between views, it smoothly makes you feel like you're seeing another part of the same image and not having a big chunky jump. But if you're not gonna be moving between those views anyway, then we can just increase the depth and let you see really, really deep into the screen. So again, this comes down to just how many enthusiasts are interested in the product and is it worth it for us to turn that on? Okay, good, thank you. Okay, I think we- Reached, reached a natural break. If you could, Nina, Nima, we have a uh, talking time after the meeting and almost everybody stays on, so it's kind of more open. And I'd invite you to be there and uh, mix in and I'm sure there's other questions. So right now I'm moving it to Valerie, who's our head of our show and tell. We did a few show and tells already mm -hmm. and uh, I have a few if we have a lot of time. Okay, wonderful. Oh, I already did one, so I'll save them. Great. Go ahead. Can Can you hear me? Okay, I'm on. Uh, I'm on headphones. You can hear me? Okay. Okay, wonderful. Sorry, yes. I was delayed to the beginning of the meeting, um, and thank you for starting the show and tell on my behalf. Uh, I do have something to um, to kind of show and tell. It's a uh, and but before I do that, I'd like to see. Does anyone have something they'd like to share? please I'll do it last oh you do it last okay um, I'm gonna go to uh, grid view um, anybody uh, was there any hands up there am I missing anybody yeah if, if somebody else has something they'd like to share you can either click on the button to raise your hand or or you can also type in the chat and we'll mm -hmm. uh, make sure you get mm -hmm. the chance or you can wave furiously at me and <laughs> We'll see you. Okay, while you think about what you might want to share, uh, I proposed uh, this idea to the board on the last meeting and they accepted it as uh, something we could try out. And that is um, for next month's competition. And we have one next month, is that true? Uh, the next competition will be in November. November, okay, that's great. It gives us a couple of months. Um, I offered to donate um, a prize to try to encourage new membership um, and new participation with the competition. So um, I have here some DreamWorks books um, from movies that we created. They're the art of books. And uh, there's three of them. There's Turbo, as you saw. Um, there's Home. And they just have, you know, beautiful artwork in there the making of all these are 3d movies so there's you know that excitement at least you know for us and madagascar 3 and these are these are beautiful books they um go for at least 40 dollars 
And so what uh, we're doing as an experiment is the winner um, of the A category will get to choose a book. The winner of the B category will also get to choose a book. And to encourage new membership and new participation, the winner of the B category chooses first. So I'm hoping that um, others uh, like myself will participate. Now, obviously I won't be in competition for a book I'm giving away, but I hope to maybe enter an image because I've never done so before. So that's the spirit of this experiment. Does Sounds that um, interest some of you? I don't know if, uh, how are you? Sounds wonderful. Your head shaking? Okay, good. Awesome. Oh yes, and uh, I think it, it was um, this. I'm trying to read the name. I'm sorry, the text is a little bit small. Is that? Can you say it? Is it Ikelia uh, Benoit? Yes. Alicia. Uh, Alicia Benoit. Yes. Thank you. I think you mentioned that you have um, some young photographers uh, that might um, be interested to participate. So maybe uh, being able to have. Com compete and choose a book, maybe that might be the tipping point. Oh, I couldn't hear you. She's mm -hmm. muted. Okay. Hey, let's uh, go on then. Do you have anything? I have a few things to show. Great. Great. Uh, Why don't you go? This, this is just my uh, little travel pack I carry with me whenever I travel. And as viewers, Actually, I always carry a pair of these so, for these meetings. This is my parallel viewer for when they're on the uh, the uh, thing. So it's a mirrored viewer. I think David Starkman has one. And then I have, I don't know if anybody's seen this but it's called the free viewers assistant. So all it is, is a mirrored viewer that is basically a prism. Thanks, David, I see him holding it up. And this will allow you, it's very small, it allows you to view parallel. All you have to do is do this, images. Uh, if you do this, you can uh, kind of do cross-eyed though I haven't really gotten it to work for that. But the other thing you can do with it is over under. So you put one of them here, you can view any over under file. So these are all, uh, you know, this also comes with a headband so you can keep it on all the time. It's kind of unique, so. Yeah, that sounds, I've never seen an over under viewer. That looks really interesting. Yeah, well, we make uh, two other over-under viewers. We make a, uh, we don't make it, the KMQ viewer, which is a little prism. It's like a lorgnette, but one views up and one views down. And uh, we make the View Magic, which we bought from a couple that used to live in Massachusetts. So if anybody remembers the View Magic, we make those. Uh, I have, still have the molds so we're making them we're redesigning them a little bit and uh putting some 3d printed parts in it so it's variable but uh just wanted to bring those up and another thing that i like a lot is you can get this from the london stereoscopic company is this owl viewer it is uh we sell lorgnettes as well. We do sell this, but it's pretty nice. And uh, you can get it from anywhere, really. Uh, us, or you can get it from Melanie, who uh, works as Brian's personal assistant. We have it, and we're carrying all their products now. So anyways, I wanted to go over that. I think that's all in the meeting. Let me see. Well, uh, there was, uh, Gordon. Gordon had shared a link yeah, earlier. Gordon, Gordon you, you wanted that? to. Uh... I missed it. Oh, yeah, sh sure. I, um, yeah, I thought I'd just uh, share that. I know people, you know, of course, on 
in different 3D communities look on those, you know, those wiggle gifs as not true 3D, which is which is perhaps something I generally agree with. But but it's um, you know, you can make an, essentially a hybrid, like a stereo pair wiggle gif, or a, or of course an anaglyph wiggle, and of course that that does require three or more shots instead of just two for your stereo pair. Um, but that uh, How come that it link requires was three. I'm sorry. How come it requires three? Well, basically, if you have two, okay, okay, mm -hmm. if you have two, um, if you have two views in the stereo pair, basically the left view is going to be switching between two, and for in order for that to work as a as a stereo pair, the the right the right gift would have to switch between two different views. Um, mm -hmm. They could share one view in common, so so your minimum number is three, but you could also have, of course, four. See, I've done them by taking a stereo pair, and then there's a program that will uh, produce a grayscale image from that. Uh, it's a computer program, a grayscale differential map, and then I put it into uh, Photoshop, and I do the displace filter, and then I do tons of them, and it gives, and then I make put it in a, a movie one and have it go back and forth very slowly with lots of intermediate images. Yeah, I think Stereo Photo Maker will also do that. You could oh, use you could use a similar it does thing. Now. Yeah, it's Ugo yeah. something. What frequency are you uh, listening to? What? <laughs> oh, anyway, and that, and you could use a similar kind of a uh, generation of multiple images, of course, for lenticular prints and things. Yeah. So can we see it? No, oh, yeah, Eric just, uh, Eric just posted that. It's, um, I mean, I could, I could do the screen share, but it would, it would, the resolution would not be good. But if you care to check that out, check out the, uh, the link there. Thank you, Eric. Mm hmm Thank you, Gordon. Hey there, Dave. You talking to me? Oh, I, now I see what you're talking about. Thanks. Forget everything I said. <laughs> okay, Eric, did you finish talking about your movie festival this weekend? Uh, yeah, yeah. The link was posted. I'll put that in the chat again. Okay. So I'm looking forward to that. Any more comments? Anybody with their hand raised? Oh uh, yeah, Eric. These two movies that you're showing the uh, uh, that you mentioned was a new film, or these is this a Korean film or an American film, or what? Uh, it's it's uh, two films that we've shown these at the Downtown Independent in the past. Uh, one is a a Korean film, eight minutes long from 2012, uh, called My Robot. And the other is from 2015. Uh, it is a US produced science fiction, uh, 36 minutes long called Hard Reset. Hmm. I remember the first one, I didn't, I didn't, the other one didn't ring a bell. Okay, good. Well, I'll be glad to see him go on. And can I go? Can I go into YouTube, or do I have to pull it from a from a, a, a email address? It'll be on the the three D space YouTube channel. If you go to the Eventbrite link, uh, the information is there. Okay. Somebody's doing ham radio in the background. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Yeah. Okay, I've muted him. Yeah, I got a quick question. Can I be heard? Go ahead. Hey, um, I had a, I've always been fascinated with like more, uh, you know, non-digital ways of sharing photos with friends because I, I was originally a, a stereo card enthusiast um, and that's what got me into 3D. And I had a, a relative who was in Prague several years ago had sent me this this postcard 
and I don't know if anybody's familiar with this, and that's kind of, I'm kind of putting the feelers out here just to see if anybody knows anything about them. But when you open the card up, it pops up and it's a, it's a viewer. And what they've done is they've got an, a, an, an old, you know, turn of the century stereo view in it that they've glued into the cardboard. And when you pop it up, it's, it's, the lenses are really tiny and it's kind of, you, you sort of, when you look through it, you kind of have to explore around the photo. Um, but all the research I've done on these things, it's, it's, they seem to only be in Prague. And um, I tried to reach out to the guy who makes them. And I don't know if it was just because I was reaching out in English. I don't know. Um, to see if there's a way that you can get blanks. You know, I thought it would be such a cool thing. Carl? Just, just Carl? Yeah. This is Abe. I, I communicated with that gentleman about 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't get too far either. It was really hard to communicate with him because he's not an English speaker or writer. Um, and I got a handful of those. He sent me some samples. I don't know where they are. Um, but I didn't like the lenses. I thought the lenses were horrible. No, I thought it was... Uh, I, I communicated with him on that viewer. He also makes a very small wooden stereoscope out of balsa wood. And the wooden stereoscope Every time I got them, they were broken. And they were really well made, so it was sad. And he okay. made that viewer, and he was interested in having us sell them, but they were lousy. The lenses were too small. It was too close to the uh, image. And we have another viewer called a uh, host view that we offer on our site that's white and it's blank, and the lenses are great. So. Oh, really? How much did, did you mind me asking how much you sell them for? Uh, I generally sell them a group of 20, I think, for like 40, but for you, uh, 55. Oh, well, thank you, Steve. That's, that's, <laughs> that's great. You're no, I, you can look on my site. They're called the Post View. And Post I have view. actually, how many of those kind of viewers do you need? Oh, you know, it was just something that I, I thought would be cool to, to have a stack of them, just to have them if you want to occasionally mm -hmm. like send them out to friends or relatives and you know what I mean? Just yeah. The ones I have, you can fit a four by six side by side print in. Perfect. I'll check them out. Thanks. So, uh, and that's called the post view. I don't know how many I have left. And then if you want to do a smaller image, I have some that you can actually run through a color copier or a printer and print directly on the viewer. Yeah. So, cause I, I don't know if you've heard of them. It's the amazing. I, I had this crazy idea several years ago that if you could take one of these, you know, one of one of these books that has the, you know, the, the fold out thing in it, and if you could actually have have the have your pages like this be like a three ring binder here, mm -hmm. with, with with printable photo pages that you could print on both sides, you know, how cool something like that would be too, you know. You know the problem with that. I also tried that. Well, you did. The images are so small. I mean, show people the images on that book. Well, now these are. Yeah, they're hard to view too, but they're, yeah, they look pretty good. The ones I had, the images were so small, it was very hard to get over the dots. So I had to print with a dye uh, sublimation printer. Well, I tell you what, this is just a, a skosh under the size of a regular stereo card. Mm-hmm. Just, just a little bit, but yeah, it's got that that two tone printing that you, you look through it and you're you're magnifying the the uh, the, the the print, you know, the, the two tone print. Yeah, but actually, the idea of a book is good because then you could use do it on a front, Fuji Frontier right. or a die sub printer, and you won't have that issue. Exactly. So I'll get those for you. Just give me an order, and I'll. Uh, I need to do. I've actually looked into it. It's 2,000 minimum. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, you, with the with the uh, manufacturers. No, I'm saying 2,000 yeah. units, and they're more than a dollar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. Uh, this may not be uh, the most elegant, but uh, for giving away prints, we just have a bunch of four by six side by sides made. Uh, you know, at Costco, 
and cinema stack along with a Lorio uh, pick a Lorio light viewer and it's got great optics and you know it's simple it's another way of doing it just not yeah, all in fancy. one little folding <laughs> device you know all right all right thanks Steve I appreciate it I'll check it out on your website yeah if you don't find it send me a email sure it's a little hard to navigate um, can, can I chime in for a second? Oh, yeah, it's your turn now. I see you uh, wanted to show some I viewers. I've been raising my hands and like being very, like, you know, uh, <laughs> non destructive. So, first of all, uh, Mr. Barrison, so if you want a compact stereo viewer for your phone, this is what I'm making. This has a screen cleaner that's detachable and you can brand it any way you want. It also has a tiny pair of anaglyph glasses that fold into it and also a viewer that I made out of a pair of Fresnels that I believe are like a magnification uh, resolution of three, probably. And that goes great with pretty much any size standard um, smartphone and it just slips right back in. Like, you know, these are like, you know, the type of wallets that you stick on the back of your phone, just sticks on with a sticker. Da -da 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 -da. So I will see your um, portable little unit and I will raise you this. <laughs> and um, yes, yes, yes. And then like, you know, you could brand it any way you want, blah, blah, blah. And you were just saying with the uh, prints on demand, um, this is a zinc printout. That is a dye sublimation type of zinc printing that's called Zero Ink. Polaroid Snap is a camera that came out. I don't know when the hell it came out, but it has a digital back. This one is the Polaroid Snap Touch. And uh, hold on, watch it not be charged. Oh, look, it's actually charged, look at me. So this actually, oh, I'm at a paper. Camera button. Is this the one with the Polaroid film in it? I think her internet went out. Her, oh. her camera just dropped off. Well, she'll be back. Yeah, the, the, Polaroid, <laughs> the Polaroid zinc um uses a, a a special paper and it's i don't know if it's a dye sub process but it yeah they, it's it's it was polaroid's answer to digital instant printing well, one thing i should mention is if you're a member polaroid. okay you're back uh, Alicia, okay. since you're a member you can mention this in the 3d news if you want to write a little bit you can even, you know, put the price and uh, link to yourself. And that doesn't just go for Alicia. So we allow little, you know, little messages if you want. Thanks for showing that, Alicia. That looked really interesting. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, if uh, Alicia, if you if you can unmute, we actually your internet dropped out, so we missed the second half of yeah, what you were showing. Yeah, I I'm, I'm, I missed. That's what you were saying also. I have no idea what you guys were talking about. Oh, we have a 3D yeah. news. Uh, if you want to put a little blurb about your product out there, that would be okay. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Okay. And we, we, we missed the second part of what you were saying about uh, the, the Polaroid the zinc printing. Oh, okay. So um, that will, um, so that has, um, so um, I actually didn't know this. I was, I actually just bought this because I have a second Polaroid snap that doesn't have a digital back. So I was going to just like cha-cha them. And uh, I mean, I was just going to um, finger sync them. But um, then when I got this one with the screen, so this actually has a, uh, a option to um, make a split screen with either two or three or four um, windowing options. And you actually do have to do to take a side-by-side cha-cha. Um, and you'll be doing a side-by-side -side parallel or across whichever way you do it. And um, I don't think I have any paper in this right now, but I can load some up if you guys want to like just hang out for a second. It takes like two seconds, like, you know. And so you can, no, do, you can um, do instant instant cha-cha well, printing? Instant cha-cha printing. I mean, if it, it's zinc printing and like, you know, the size is like, you know, a two by three. But if you need right. that immediately, which we all do all the time, then it's a good option. So uh, this goes face down. This is how you load it. Oh, sorry, I think I loaded it upside down. Hold on, you can only do it one way or the other way. It won't like screw up the machine at all. And um, hold it up so we can see it. Load it. it. Oh, I'm sorry. 
my bad. I thought you guys could see that. So basically it's empty. I opened up the package. It has like a little um, barcode thingy on the top, which goes, um, hold on. I actually have to read this. Uh, color cal calibration sheet, I guess this goes on the bottom. Put it and um, once all the paper is in, you just, oh, I didn't load it right. I'm only gonna put a couple of sheets in, sorry guys. So, boom, right? And let me take a picture of, I, I mean, I, I, this is some kind of dye sublimation printer or is a, it's a photo, I didn't understand. It, it's a dye sublimation printer that basically all the dye is in the action. Right. And um, then it just uses. Alicia, you froze. <laughs> is that just yeah, me? Uh, she, no, she froze up. She froze up again. I think when she picked up her phone, it froze. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, Very bad the, connected problems. So yeah. So you do. I can take right now. I missed how you get a half I'll an image on each on one print. Correct. So but I'm taking a shot right print. now. Oh my god! Yeah, Andy, the, the 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 camera has a mode where to let you take two pictures and it puts them side by side on the screen. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. I missed that. Okay. And now it'll print out eventually. But you, and it doesn't hold more than one piece of paper. It holds it. No, it holds a package of like um, I think twenty. Oh, okay. So that's the whole pack. Yeah. And I mean, it's slow. Oh, here it is. And one of them is blurry because I'm just demonstrating. But you get a you know, digital you know. file too. Say again. You get a digital file also. Uh, yes. Yeah, so you get to. Uh, they say they save as separate digital uh, uh, files, and they save as a uh, then a combined file as well. And um, it doesn't have a lot of memory in it. I don't know if it has. Um, oh, I guess it has a micro SD card slot, which I've never used before. Um, and I basically like sit around and erase images and then like take more basically. But this was just the resulting uh, image that I just had of this battery that I just took a cha-cha of. And um, of course the quality is um, exactly what you would expect from a Polaroid knocking off a Polaroid um, uh, because that's what it is. But um, it's very nifty. Um, um, it's uh, something that really wasn't very popularized. Like I guess like the Instax, the Fuji Instax is pretty much like that's that's it, right? Like everybody uses Fuji Instax, which is actually like a which is actually a, a Polaroid type film, right? That's a polarized film, yeah. Um, and this is literally no ink, no anything. Um, basically, this is the entire um, substrate and consumables that you'll be using. And they're very cheap. You could get like a pack for like I don't know, like like eight bucks or six bucks if you want, if you look hard enough. And I'm cool. not shopping today. Sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> very interesting. Nisha, they what they still make those. You can get them like at B and H or something. No, these are. I mean, like I only rock technology from like 2013, so I'm sure you could just get them on eBay. Um, Steve the... Barrett, maybe he has them on his website. Do you? I don't have them. Whoops. I know. I'm going to dot all your I's and uh, cross all your T's, honey. Don't worry. Sounds good. Okay, let me uh, share about the, somebody said something about the amazing card, uh, David, but this is what we have as far as paper viewers. We have this, but actually in white, so you can put any picture you want in there. Uh, these are all four inch, I believe, focal length, or they may be seven. These come in white. This is what I was talking about. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a, that's a three by five, I think, or maybe it's four by six. So the, the lenses are made, these used to be made by, I think it was called added dimension. <laughs> so uh, we are now, uh, getting, I think we're getting these from, we bought the remaining stock from uh, somebody. 
American paper <laughs> optics. <laughs> yeah, that's it. American paper optics. Uh, so if you want to, and then we uh, actually they had trouble with the lens manufacturer. So Rich Dube now actually made the lenses for these. We had a better lens put in. So that worked out well. Then we have, uh, I was talking about the amazing card. This is it. So you can make your own cards if you want. Plus we have tons of them, uh, 3D Holland and already made cards if you're interested. Sorry, just had to butt in. It's all right, I asked. No, I don't know why everybody getting a run on them here and taking them from me. <laughs> I'll check my uh, mark. Not to, not to worry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a I have a Polaroid Zinc, just just a standalone printer. I can't do the the side by side cha cha uh, to this, but I used to use this. Um, I would take pictures with my phone. Um, use 3D steroid to make anaglyphs and then over Bluetooth, I could send prints so I could do instant anaglyph prints. Steve, yeah. do you still, oh, do you still carry those uh, viewers that were called, I think, Stereopticon 707? Uh, yeah. That, uh, they, they have two really, they have really two really good lenses in them. And I yeah, use them we kind of sell as, uh, those. As a and we, can, we can also sell the lens separately. Right. So so those are really lenses, good for. It's a different. Price. Those are really good for for. Um, uh, I have an artisan uh, Epson artisan printer, and the uh, the fine grain quality of that is really good. That uh, so that when you're viewing them under magnification, you still don't see the uh, the pixels. Uh, yeah, the, we uh, change the, the dots. We changed the viewer from the older ones. They used to be cardboard, but they left too many uh, stray fibers on photographs. So now they're uh, plastic. Right, yeah, yeah. So you probably got a plastic one already, huh? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I did get the plastic ones. That was, uh, and, and I, I cut off the, uh, the stand because the little plastic stand is, is worthless. It, it warps and it doesn't hold the thing in, in good alignment. So I just use them like a, a lorgnette viewer, and that seems to work really well. Mm. But the lenses are so good, I, I really like them. And uh, for uh, for uh, somebody who just wants to look at an occasional side-by-side, -side, small magnification, uh, rather small sized uh, picture, they're wonderful. And uh, with a good printer, you can uh, you don't you don't get any uh, uh, pixels showing up or any dots showing up from the printing. Yeah, if I can try pre-creasing that seem mm -hmm. maybe it'll fold better. I know exactly what right. you're talking about. Right. <laughs> are you are you are you guys I, I'm sorry just because I keep on cutting out uh, losing my internet, but are you guys just talking about uh, that you want print options for, for, for stereo cards and stuff like that? Whatever you want, we're in the open section after the meeting. Oh, that's but that's what is that what you guys were just asking about though? Yeah. Well, uh, it, it came up. I was, just, yeah. uh, I was just promoting my products. <laughs> <laughs> this, which this is, is allowed what, here. What type of this is a good one, Steve. In fact, I want to buy one of your products, Felicia. I want to buy that. Is that a possibility? No, 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 you don't want to sell all my products. You don't want to buy them. Oh, I'll sell them if uh, you send me a prototype. Okay. So, 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 about you guys need prints? Do you print? Yeah, I print. What are you printing with? Uh, I have an old Alps dye sublimation printer. Oh, you do dye sub? Okay, but I'm 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 a dye sub printer also. That's um. You have a what brand? Alps. A L P. A L P S. It's it's a it's a, 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 um, a pigment ink or is it a, a, a like a like a, a ribbon? It's a ribbon. Oh, you have a ribbon printer, so it's a smaller one. It's like what's your what's your maximum print size? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. What's your maximum print size? Well, I could print eight by ten. 
just okay. the ribbons are reeled. They're in a very okay. long thing. I print, I can do t-shirt like, stuff. Those and, are like from, um, those are like made for like, uh, more like the credit card, uh, uh, duplication industry, like making a, no, that's, that's, that's no, the it's industry. an amateur desktop printer. That was the first, uh, consumer dice up printer. Really? Did you get it from a company called, they had a logo that was a cactus? No. Okay. <laughs> it was uh, Alps, the actual company. Oh, really? Okay, okay. Very cool, very cool. I wouldn't recommend it because it's hard to get support for it anymore. I, I can't imagine like using a ribbon die sub printer for anything that's like uh, uh, I can't even imagine that, that that it's doing eight by tens. Honestly, that's that's that's. Uh, you have uh, to use special little, paper. You, um, you can't use regular paper on it. Okay. Yeah. No. I mean, di die sub also. It's it, it does a, a heat process also, right? Yeah, and any uh, irregularity will end up just pulling the ribbon out. If you oh. have a piece of paper and you have a fingerprint on it, yeah, you're dead. Oh, so that sounds like a pain in the ass. Yeah. Oh, you should come to. You should come to. Uh, you want me to get you a good. Uh, you could get a, a an Epson seventy one ten uh, with the uh, uh, either a, a cart or a CIS uh, mod. Uh, probably like the Epson is like about like I don't know like a hundred dollars and the mod is like fifty and you can hmm. go die sub uh, just inkjet. That's what I do. Um, and, um, they're disposable for me, honestly, because I get really, uh, a lot of heat in the winter time and it usually kills my printer when I go uh -huh. away for more than a day. And, uh, that's like the big thing with the die sub is that uh, the maintenance on it is really, uh, in, you, you can't leave the printer alone for a day otherwise, because it's not even, um, it's not even like a liquid dye. It's a solid particle suspended in an aqueous solution, whatever. And it just kills all your, uh, lines in. But um, die sub is the best. That's what I also do for doing. I yeah, was able. To it, you can view anything really magnified. Yeah, I was able. I was able to duplicate slides actually. So like, it's been really good. There, it's a really good system. I think. Well, it's great cool. for transparencies. Yeah, that's well, that's 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 like what my goal is to do. Like just slide dupes, like realists. Yeah, so far I haven't gotten them approaching like. I got them approaching the old image, the new image 3D. Oh, I, I can show you a sample if you want, if I could find it, but like I'm in the middle of, um, what am I doing, demolition or? or, or, or <laughs> I'm in the middle of demolishing my studio. So um, I don't know where it is at the moment, but I have a nice sample on, uh, I believe a piece of plastic actually. And um, it's, um, Basically, uh, I do realist slides in the realist format, and it's it holds under magnification beautifully. Um, and um, that was with a specific uh, Epson uh, fucking. Uh, that was with my R twenty four hundred, and that one I have in the middle. I have to. I have to. I have to. I have to clean the print heads, which is going to take me three months. But um, that's a great printer for that. <laughs> Frozen. Huh? All right, you're back. Okay. All right. So I'm I'm curious. Um, how many people who are on here right now have a hydrogen one? phone and have uh, uh, put pictures on Holopix. Very interesting I question. I have. Hey, that's awesome. There's one. Okay, Andy has one. How expensive are they? Uh, Lee, you you're raising your hand. You, you have a hydrogen one, Lee? Lee, you're muted. We can't hear you. How about now? Now we can hear you, yeah. Yes, I do, but I haven't used it very much yet. 
do, I do have a couple of hydrogens. Hmm. I think yes, I, I have so, something that is also muted. Well, while we're waiting, I was just going to show the uh, Alps from. What the fuck is this? This is my model. Well, I was just thinking that that while we have Nima here, it'd be good for. Was he here? Uh, Steve, were you not paying attention? We were just talking about hydrogen one phones. Yeah, I saw you say that, but I didn't see Nima. No, oh. we were just having a discussion that you interrupted. <laughs> no, I wasn't done. You interrupted my discussion. Yeah, Nima's here. Let him take over. I, I, it looks uh, like Mark's so. Been he's been muted this this whole time. Oh, I think. I How think many hydrogen yeah, 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 are out yeah. there? I couldn't see. Yeah, I guess everyone, if you have yours with you, put it up. And if not, uh, I guess just raise your hand or something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, 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 how many do we have? I don't know. Let's see, about two, three. And Lee said he's got one. Lee's got a couple of them. I got one. Six? Wow. If we can chat in 3D on them. What's the name of that hollow chat? Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's it's got hollow chat. We could actually chat. You can in chat. You use this 3D camera here, and you have a FaceTime in 3D. There is a new. I've been. I, a different team is working on too. That'll also let you just share any 3D content, which includes photos, videos, 3D models, and it'll just stream that to another device. So they don't even have to have the file. They'll just be getting a stream of your content. So it's gonna be pretty cool. Wait, they. They get it if so. If you shoot something in three D, they get it in two D. If they're not, they don't have this phone. Uh, actually, yes, but that's coming later. So what I'm saying is, there's a new version of HoloChat that will let you stream. If you have like a three D model on your tablet and you're showing the three D model, it will stream a video of that to the other person, so they can just see exactly what you're doing in three D, and it's the same stuff you're doing in three D. So if you're watching a three D video, they'll just get a stream of your three D video. So if you put like you know, Toy Story in 3D on your tablet or watching, you can stream that to the other person too. Would so, that be Anaglyph or would it be side by side or? SBS or one of our light field formats. Okay. Yeah. So are you going to open up Holopix so it's viewable outside of the hydrogen phone? I missed that. Yeah, that is the plan. Yes. We'll see how long it takes us, but yes, I am pushing so it very cool. hard. I mean, I can do it here, but I, uh, a lot of people, there's a lot of people who don't have this phone. I agree. I think it, it's going to be an interesting experience for people without the because they can post 2D and it'll turn into 3D for them, which is really awesome. But it's also great for people who do have either hydrogen or the upcoming loom pad because the content they create will be easily shared with anyone on any device. So I think it'll be great. Sorry, I missed. I was working a moon pad. I'll, I'll write that. Loom, loom pad, L-U-M-E, L-U-M-E pad. All right. Um, here we can we can put the the link. All right, you guys all chat again. But <laughs> I really appreciate you recapping. Uh, Me too. <laughs> Nima, um, can you tell us how you became interested in three D photography? Like, what was your path to go this direction? That's an interesting question. Uh, there's kind of a lot of things that led to it. I mean, obviously, like many people, there was some anaglyph stuff I saw when I was a kid. I saw. Viewmaster as a kid, but I don't remember realizing Viewmaster was 3D. I think my IPD was too small for Viewmaster when I when I was using it when I was like four or five. Um, and then I got really interested in it towards the end of the 2010s when Avatar came out and then there were, uh, I was still in high school at the time, and then there were also uh, 3D games coming out on PS3. And I worked at Apple uh, in Seattle when I was 18 and there was a Sony store that was like right around the corner. So while I was in college, I would go to the Sony store sometimes and try out their new HMZ series headsets, which I was like really interested in playing 3D on. And I was, I mean, primarily like VR is like a big thing for me now, but 3D is what led me there. I started going to MTBS 3D because I wanted to start running 3D games on, um, uh, 3D games on like my PC and playing them back on the monitors and trying to find out 
what are all the different things I need to get to have like a compatible experience. Um, and then uh, I, uh, I mean, it was, it was kind of a lot of things put together, but I remember wanting to play 3D games, watching 3D movies. I finally set up a computer to do that maybe five or six years ago with, with AMD HD 3D on a computer that I built. And then, oh, obviously Nintendo 3DS as well. I, I really love playing that. And then I was in VR for the last seven or eight years now. Pretty much as soon as the Oculus Rift uh, announcement happened, I started working in VR professionally. And then I joined Leia about two years ago um, because I saw that almost all 3D was moving to VR, which meant all the cameras that were coming out were 360 stereo cameras. I saw that um, people were viewing most of the content in headsets instead of viewing them uh, on uh, three displays with, and 3D TVs weren't getting made. So I thought to myself, there's kind of two paths forward. It's either everything moves to VR and AR or there is a there's something else. And the way that I see it is that light field displays add value that you can't get from VR and AR. One of the core things you'll always need to do is synchronize your headset so the experience between people is the same. And what light field displays lets you do is anyone can just walk up without any electronics, without synchronizing anything, without them knowing anything, and be able to look and get an immersive experience instantaneously. So what my real goal is, is to push our technology until the point where we really cover the world in light fields. I would love to see, and this is very sci-fi, but I would love to see every surface of every home, all the walls and the floor and the ceiling covered with light field displays. So every single room can be a holodeck. We can project objects into the world and just have these, I mean, it's like, it's like a, a Star Trek holodeck, just project things into the world without having to wear anything, without glasses. Um, and then there, there's also a, a further point. What I thought would be really cool is if everything, all the surfaces in, in rooms and houses were made with like, like pneumatic um, poles that had light field displays all over them, uh, you could create physical objects that you can like sit on top of and still, I just, this is the kind of thing that really gets me excited. And I think that we're definitely probably half a century away from a proof of concept that can do that. But uh, I think that that is a possibility. If people like light field displays and it takes off and uh, lives alongside VR, I think then both will develop to the point where um, light field still has a lot of value. For example, in the medical field, people can't put on and off glasses or in um, banking where you want to have a privacy view and you don't want to have a computing system that you're carrying with you that people can hack into. You go to an ATM. You also don't want to connect your headset to the ATM because you don't know if there's interference there or someone's going to hack into it. I think there's just so many use cases where light field displays um, can augment uh, what the capabilities of AR and VR glasses are. Or in another world, if everyone just likes VR and people don't buy light field displays, then Facebook will control people's eyes. And that's not, um, that's not an ideal future. So anyways, it's kind of, it's kind of a bunch of thoughts together, but hopefully I answered your question a little bit. Oh, it's really, it's really interesting. It's always nice to hear, you know, what motivates uh, someone to um, just take it as far as you've done. I mean, it's amazing um, what you're doing with your company. And uh, I just really liked your website as well. The way that when you turn an image, it really looks 3D. You know, I just thought that was beautifully done. Um, would you mind, um, awesome. I have another question, but I'll pause for a moment in case someone else would like to jump in. Okay, don't see anybody jumping in, I'll, I'll go for it. Um, I've heard the term light fill display. I get the gist of it because of your demo, but if I was trying to describe it to, let's say one of my students, what would be the best way to describe a light field display and how it's different than other displays? Yeah, so it's kind of a misnomer and I wanna put that out there. Uh, I'm not the founder of the company and I'm not, I'm just one of the, the, the I'm kind of like the lead product manager. So I think it's, it's fair for me to say. Light field technology, which is the word light space field is different from what we call light field, which is within, it's, it's a capital L and it's one word. It's kind of a, a brand name. Um, auto multiscopic is actually much closer to what we do. However, our displays use light field, uh, use the knowledge of light fields on how to kind of fold the views on top of each other, which is different from stereo. Like in stereo, what you're trying to do is you're trying to give 
a completely independent, unique view to each of your eyes. Um, whereas with us, we're kind of folding the views on top of each other. So each of your eyes gets multiple images. A true light field image, or what a light field is, is a, it's a description of all of the rays of light, including the color and intensity of the light within a volume. So uh, if I was to cut out a cube in space right here, and I was able to describe that mathematically, which is usually done as a five-dimensional planoptic function, um, that cube of light, the, the equation of that cube of light would be a light field. It is a 3D volumetric field of light and their descriptions. Now, the cool thing with our products is that you can move, you could use the tablet in AR and move through it and see that light field in 3D. So that, that's like a very unique way to view light fields. Um, I would say the best way to learn about what an actual light field is, is to Google it. I'd say the best way to find out what a Leia light field TM is, is to, to reach out to us. Although I, I remember uh, a number of years back at uh, the SIGGRAPH conference, uh, David, one of the founders of the company, had his true light field display. It was about uh, an inch by an inch, but it was creating a, a full proper light field with both horizontal and vertical parallax. Technically, our displays do that too, but I would still argue that's auto multiscopic. I mean, it does use okay. light field technology, but I, I personally, I've, I've been, I think, I think the term light field has a very specific description and having discrete views at all, it does not fit that description. But on top of that, I also think that if we get to a certain number of views, uh, my, my being pedantic doesn't matter anymore. What I, what I think that we're moving towards is something that I call a de facto hologram. So a de facto hologram is a display in which a human being at any distance is unable to perceive any jump between the views, which means there are enough views that no matter how you're moving and how far away you are from the display, you are unable to notice when it's moving between discrete views. And I think when I talk to our optics team, we're going to need about somewhere, probably a little bit more than 50 views in each direction to be able to do that. Uh, and it um, depends on the size of the display and the, the, the view angle and the distance from the display too. But on like, let's say like a, I don't know, like a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter square, probably 50 views in every direction. Now, are, are your displays able to have the, the vertical parallax working at the same time as the horizontal? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen it. You can turn it on on hydrogen and on loom pad with our internal SDK. We won't do that unless we find like a... Can you help me? We have to have like a, like a partner that would give us a good reason. It's already broken on the top. Okay, uh, okay. Just, uh, just, just thinking that would, that would be... Uh, um, an interesting added enhancement if you were able, in addition to seeing an image in 3D, to be able to tilt the phone up and down and actually be able to have a, a vertical perspective shift. Yeah, I think for photos, there's a non-zero chance we will turn on that functionality sometime during the LoomPad's life cycle for very specific use cases. For example, maybe for Leia Show, when you put photos into Leia Show, maybe we'll just convert them into 16 view light field, or you know, 16 view images. I'm not gonna use the term light field anymore. But um, until then, I think, uh, yeah, the four view is pretty good. We find that most people just want to tilt a little bit. Most people aren't looking in every direction. The one cool thing about 16 view images, especially on LoomPad, is if you have the tablet on like a coffee table, people who are like walking around it, it's 3D from every single perspective. So if you put something in it that's like a, like a hole or something like that, it just looks like there's a hole in your table when you look at the tablet. You can just walk around and it's, it's super cool. So that's the one thing I think is really cool about 16 views, but I think more than four, there's a, there's a specific reason we do four views. I think in most cases, 16 views is a gimmick. And I think many people, especially stereoscopic enthusiasts will argue that four views is also a gimmick in most situations, but I disagree. And, you know, so it gives I, you a little more room to move around. Yeah, definitely a very wide angle uh, experience. So with the 16 views, your, your view angle is improved as you move, you're saying? Uh, no, 
the view angle is the same. So you get the benefits of the 16 views even when we only have a four view image running because we're just duplicating the it, four vertically. It, so if, the, if, if I understood it correctly, you've got four side by side and four up and down for a 16. Correct, in, in the 16 view. So the biggest difference I would say is that right now, if you have the four views and you put them down and you move around the display while it's on a table, you'll get to a certain point where it goes completely flat because your eyes are seeing the same thing. When you make it full, like when you make it 16 views, no matter where you go, you're always seeing unique views in your eyes. So it always looks 3D from every perspective. So if you have something like that on like your floor or on a table or something, it's just a very striking effect that you can just move in every direction and see unique views and it's always 3D. Yeah, yeah that's what I was saying. It, it increases your field of view, your angle of view. It, so you can get a stereoscopic effect from more places. It increases your stereoscopic field of view in the case that you're rotating the device or you're rotating around an unmoving device. Because otherwise, with us, I mean, if it's in landscape mode and you rotate it, we'll just rotate everything so it switches to portrait mode, right? So if you're like, if you turn the device from landscape to portrait, it'll just rotate and it'll also be four views. This one makes it so there's like no rotation needed. You're moving around the device and you see it at all times. Now, are you doing motion objects or only stills? in the 16 view? Um, I have only ever seen it for photos. I think decoding a video or doing real time stuff at 16 views is uh, probably not gonna happen anytime soon. But the, the video on here is four view. Correct, all, all videos are four view, just not 16 view. On here, yeah. So that, that's what was cool. I just, I like the stereoscopic and you can see how it cuts out. It's polarized, I guess. Uh, I like the, uh, Autostereoscopic viewing. I'm glad. Any so, other I think you can pick them up used still on eBay. 200 bucks or less on eBay, yeah. And I think once LoonPet comes out and people start seeing the value there, I think the price are going to probably shoot up because um, a lot of people are still going to want to capture stuff on hydrogen and view it on LoonPad. For example, I realized the other day that taking a 3D selfie, there's literally no device in the world better than hydrogen for taking a 3D selfie. I took a picture of myself. I posted on Holofix, maybe Mary, maybe Eric saw it, but it's me with Boba and I'm just like, I took a, a selfie and I was like, wow, I could do it with one hand because it's got the shutter button on it and you're holding it and you're getting a nice, you get a bunch of depth to it and it's a 3D selfie. And yeah, there's just really nothing, nothing better than hydrogen for that. The cameras are close together for, for close view and then further apart for other stuff. So you get the wider interaxial and a narrow one for selfies. Maybe you went over all that before, I don't know. But it's pretty cool. Thank you. All right, any other questions? I was, somebody said my videos that I sent them had a little wobble in them. I didn't know what it was. Oh, they said, but and, I think uh, it's the image stabilization thing. Mm -hmm. I think, and also Alicia has a question. Um, if uh, anyone has a suggestion for Andrew's wobble issue. Oh, I don't have a suggestion for the, I don't know what the wobble issue is, but mm -hmm. I was just gonna comment on the, um, your whole, uh, how many images you need for light field display, blah, blah, blah. And this is basically for Eric also, the zebra holograms, specifically the Star Wars zebra holograms have a viewing yeah. angle that is exactly like what you're talking about um, is your name pronounced Nima? Yeah, it's Nima. Okay, so then, like, and I just like I just had to like try to like I I don't know if you could see it out in the hallway. Let's see. So this is a hologram. Oh, beautiful! Thank you so much. So this will be viewable from any angle ever, from across the room, yeah. no matter what. So this is exactly what you're trying to explain or talk about. Something like this. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I think okay. the only difference is is that. Um, we want to do it dynamically. So I could be wrong, but that image can't change, right? Like you can't have the um, No, this is a static image. It just, it just has yeah. as many viewing points as like, uh, uh, as uh, you're claiming that a uh, light field would be touting. Right, right, right. So- Yeah, I, 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 right. I believe, I believe the zebras were using- uh, Hoxels. 1,024 1, by 1,024 of these holographic pixels. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that was the only thing that was coming to mind as in something yeah. that's viewable from every, and it, it really is quite different from 
uh, like, you know, even being in the same position, but just a uh, uh, just distance depth uh, or, or like on any X, Y, Z angle, a uh, uh, point that you could approach it, it's a completely different and uh, um, realistic view. And um, that's something that is basically uh, viewable. I, I mean, I've, I haven't, I, I didn't even know that it was that deep until like I, I, I lit it from across the room and I walked in one day and I was like, oh my God, I've never seen it like this before. So, yeah, Nima, sometime I'll, I'll have to show you some of the zebra holograms. Yeah, Unfortunately, the, 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 the company, they were based in Texas. Uh, they still exist, but now they're just a military contractor. They no longer have consumer products. Yeah, I have heard of them, but I've never seen them in person. I will say that all holograms, all true holograms, whether they're produced by, from digital content or are real awesome. content, those are all light fields. So that is all true light fields. So I think really what we're trying to get to is getting to being able to do that digitally instead of doing it yeah. um, and, and dynamically so you can change the image as opposed to just having it be like a static photo or whatever you would call a, a hologram. I guess, just, I guess just hologram. Right. Mm. Hmm. Cool. Um, Nima, did you mention that um, there is maybe a support extra fee you can pay for the pad, um, or is that not part? Is that not part of the contract? Like, if you buy a Luma pad, is there like an extra fee you can pay to get extra? Support? Uh, with Luma pad, Luma pad is a creator's edition product. We will give you unlimited support, whatever whatever you want, whatever help you need. Uh, you just you email help at layinc.com. Even before you buy LoomPad, we can answer any questions you have if you just, and I'll put this in here, it's just help at layinc.com. Um, super simple, and we are more than happy to answer any questions you have. And uh, yeah, support, we're here to support content creators. I mean, if you have a bunch of photos that you wanna see in Lightfield, we wanna help you make those beautifully converted. We don't want there to be any, like I'm sure many of you are expert 3D photographers, and much of the content will just automatically look great, but for the ones that aren't automatic, we want to help you make that conversion go perfectly well because we don't want um, we don't want there to be any loss when you go from 3D to light field. And in fact, we'd rather it be better if at all possible. So yeah, we will provide whatever support you need. So for those of us who are shooting MPOs, then how would we process our image to appear on the pad? What, what I would say is that the first step is going to be do the conversion using Stereo Photo Maker, like go from MPO to SPS, and then it would uh, automatically work there. Um, I do know that uh, Masuji-san has added uh, like layer image format support to Stereo Photo Maker, so the process should be easier than ever. And if you'd like yeah, to- and I've, I've personally, I've, I've been taking a lot of my, my full-size side-by-side stereo photos and uploading them to the Holopix app. Um, yeah. The Holopix app converts it to the four of you. In fact, there's a little slider that you can adjust how the depth, the, the amount of depth in the image. It's, it's pretty cool. So I'll, I'll upload my stereo pair. The software converts it and then I can adjust the slider until it looks just the way I want it before I actually submit it. You, Eric and I spent like a day, a half a day trying to figure out how to do it in Stereo Photo Maker. And we couldn't figure it out. And then I guess you told them that you just upload it and it converts it automatically. <laughs> yep. Yeah, all you got to do is use Leia Player. So Leia Player ships with all of our devices. Yeah. And in Leia Player, you can view everything on the fly. You can hit edit and tune it in. You can change the color. You can change the convergence. It's very, very easy to use. And then from Leia Player, you can upload straight to Holofix. And at that point, yeah. you can... Yeah. Uh, you can comment, you can like, you can bookmark, you can mention your friends, tell them to come check it out. If someone's annoying, you could block them. So it's a full social network just for 3D and light field images. So yeah. like Instagram for 3D, it's amazing. And and you can hashtag stuff and make, that's the thing I haven't figured out. And this, but is this curated a little bit? It seemed like somebody was cleaning it up a little. Yes, um, there is a s small amount of curation, but mostly it's just the algorithm. So the algorithm identifies what people like based on how much they're tapping, how much they are commenting, how much they're spending time looking at your image. Uh, if an image is uncomfortable to someone's eyes, uh, one of the moderator's eyes specifically, or if someone reports an image for being uncomfortable, then it could be removed from the, uh, from the feed. We will not delete your image unless the image is uh, breaking one of our rules like uh, there's no nudity allowed on the platform, for example, unless it's tasteful. But that's a great area. People do not 
don't don't try to post uh don't I'd, I'd recommend people not post stuff like that and we might still remove it from the feed we just won't delete it from the platform there's some beautiful stuff actually I, but not it, yeah but it's t it's like models it's tasteful it's not pornographic in other words there is a, a question about editing images and correcting deaf and disparity maps so um we may allow that in the future right now i would just recommend making sure that the well i mean if you want to create a quad we actually don't do any post-processing so if you can create a quad image which is view uh i don't know how to do it so you guys can see i guess probably like view one two three four um we do no post-processing so if you create your own image and edit it that way depth maps and stuff don't matter so if you want to create the quad from a depth map go ahead and do that it doesn't matter how you get it but once you get that we don't touch it so if, if you're unhappy with the quality of the image we recommend just creating a quad and then we're not gonna run any machine learning on it so it'll be exactly as you made it Oh, so you're touching up the, the, the stereoscopic quality of some of them. Is that what you're saying? Um, we take SBS images and then we identify what the disparity is between those two images and then generate four new views from the SBS. That's ah. how sometimes we'll, we'll, we'll keep both of the views. We won't change them, but sometimes we'll just create four completely new views. So, yeah. Okay. So you can do an, a walking animation then somehow? You can do like a four view animation if you wanted. So people, yeah, yeah, that is or not, do, that's not what we recommend. We, because mm -hmm. it's still uncomfortable because if you have like one eye mm -hmm. and you move around, it's cool, but then you're sending two different images to people's eyes and it's very uncomfortable. So we generally don't recommend that. And I will probably remove it from the feeds if you upload something like that. But people who follow you will still be able to see it. So yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just saying like using it for a store display, would you be able to, put an image with how many lines are there across 80? Uh, you would only see four views. So if you would uh, put like a walking image of four and it would look exactly like what you're saying if you're far enough away, but if you're mm -hmm. close to it, then you're sending two different images to someone's eye and it's pretty uncomfortable. Okay, so it's a bad idea. A lot of the people who bought these phones are were pretty good photographers because I think they were into red cameras. So there's some, inter and there's some interesting celebrities that have bought these, I think. Yeah, we have a picture of Miley Cyrus on there because uh, whatever her husband at the time uh, was partnered with Red, so he has an account. Um, he, uh, whoever plays Thor, his little brother, Liam Hemsworth, that's his name. Liam Hemsworth is on there, uh, has an account. And then there's a couple other ones. There's some people in Hollywood who took pictures of like, uh, Samuel L. Jackson's on there and others like that. Aquaman and I'm, uh, I'm getting to my, 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 my limit. I got to get going everyone. So I think one more question is what I'll be able to, to do. So I'm going to butt in and say, um, so blah, 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 whatever, like, what are you guys going to, what are you guys going to do for a promotion for like your like holiday sale coming up in November? Um, there is currently no plan. I'm just going to say, if you want a hundred bucks off, use the code NEMA N I M A you get a hundred okay. bucks. Off. So that's a, that's a pretty good deal. Um, that's not bad. Yeah. Beyond that, uh, I I can guarantee you literally no one's thought that far ahead because we're just ensuring that we can actually get the tablet into people's hands in October. And I am working gotcha. the longest hours to make that happen. So uh, that's kind of- If you need a marketing director. <laughs> All right, thank you everyone. I'm gonna get going. Well, yeah, Nima, thank Nima, Nima, thanks really so much. Thanks it. so much for spending time with us tonight. I really appreciate your, your being thank here with you. us. Of course. And uh, we, we'd love to have you back. Um, uh, anytime you want to pay us a visit. Awesome. Yeah, I think in a few months uh, after Loompad launches, let's uh, let's chat again. I'd love to be here and share with you guys what's new and all the new products that I was not able to talk about today. Hopefully, I'll be able to talk about it then. Very cool. Thanks, Very cool. Thanks, Thanks again for coming. Thank you so much. Give me applause, Thank Eric. You. Yeah. Yay. Oh, yeah. Eric yeah, right. I have, so this is recorded. I, I have applause. So back, and I could watch his presentation from the beginning. Is it the... the, the <laughs> That's great. Okay. <laughs> so
so let's see. Yeah, it is it is quarter to ten here, so it's probably a a good point to um, how call can it I, a night for tonight. How would you see the recording now? Oh, nice uh, we'll have to we'll we'll have to post it on the club's YouTube channel at some point. Oh, I wanted to thank Eric for he runs this now. He did a great job. I would yeah. like to set of applause for thank Eric. Thank you, Eric. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you. I'd like to thank David Kuntz for doing the uh, competition. I thought it went hey, David. really well. Hi, David. Thank Good you, David. deal, David. I'd like to thank Valerie for doing the uh, the <laughs> Valerie for doing the show and tell and donating those books. And I'd like to thank Oliver for being here for 50 years. Over 50 years. <laughs> oh, I just oh, Oliver. Oliver. And I will wish you for having all those great ideas. Right. I'm speaking with great ideas. Remember, mm -hmm. and, Darth and Chris Cassidy. Hey, yeah. Chris. No. Hey, that great. I saw one of your, I re-saw one of your animations today. Hi, Chris. Reading, but, uh, Circulating. Enjoyed it. Circulating. Carol's birthday was yesterday, the woman who did all that cool artwork. Oh. Uh, birthday. She drove up the state to Sacramento. Hi, Alicia. Hi, Chris. What's up? Is it 1 a.m. there in New York City? Um, I, I, I have no concept of time or day or year or anything anymore. <laughs> anymore. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, I see Jan, Robert, Dave. Oh, Dave Curlander. Yes, thanks for helping oh, me at this morning table, Dave. Social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, what is that you're holding up? The Hollywood 3D exhibition opens October 1st. So make sure you get your images oh. in. The uploader opens October 1st, which will. It's coming fast. Reminds me, Susan was holding up a paper tonight that was blurry. Did anybody read what she was I holding? couldn't read it. I yeah. couldn't see that either. We all saw that, but couldn't mm. read it. We'll enhance it in the, uh, we could do a screen capture from the replay and enhance it. We, we could just ask her. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <That's a good laughs> okay. Too smart for me. I know. Okay, Jan Robert Williams. Hello. Can you introduce yeah. yourself? I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not yet. Hello, I'm uh, from Norway, and it's uh, it's uh, seven o'clock in the morning, and uh, oh <laughs> I'm <laughs> I I met you all at uh, the ISU convention in Irvine. Yes. I remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, so it was uh, very interesting to to see the presentation of the loom pad. And uh, I'm looking forward to see one uh, in person. So <laughs> sounds great. We'll yep. keep you. Thanks for attending. You get the prize for the furthest away. Yeah, thanks. For <laughs> good morning, pretty good. Nice, yeah. an nice anaglyph um, profile, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> that's really good. Take a look at that. And I want to thank Andrew Park for. Uh, Getting the Hollywood, it used to be a chore to get it when me and David were doing it, but uh, Andrew- That's you, not a chore already. Not a chore for you <laughs> anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's not a chore for me anymore. And Andrew, I really thank you for taking care of it. And it's one of the club's good money makers actually. It's appreciated. Okay. Andrew, the 3D club on October 1st, is that gonna be online? No, uh, well, the uh, competition uploader for the Hollywood 3D exhibition uh, opens October 1st. I think it closes the 31st or November 1st. I have to double check. And uh, you submit four images. They can be uh, UHD. And uh, the rest of the stuff, you go to the LA 3D website, you go to competitions, you go down to Hollywood 3D exhibition and click there and you get the brochure and it has all the details. Thank you. Okay, and I forgot to thank Eric 
for getting Nima. I thought that was a very good. Yeah, that was that was great. You know, that's, that that really, so much. I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, really helped uh, out the uh, movie. I, I actually, I met Nima last year. He came over to 3D Space and uh, took a tour of the museum. And then we uh, uh, ended up going out to dinner afterwards and talking 3D for a while. And then this past January, uh, when I was up at the Stereoscopic Displays and Applications Conference, um, uh, I, I stayed an extra day up in the Bay Area and uh, Nima invited me to come down to their facility in in Menlo Park, and I actually got to, I got to see the loom pad back in January um, as a prototype. So that was that was kind of cool. What's the what's mm. the retail price? What's the what? 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 It's what's the MSRP on the thing? Oh, it's it's nine ninety nine. It oh. he showed us the. You can you can order them now. It's nine ninety nine. So you can get it for eight ninety nine. If you if you put his if, name. Yeah, if if you put in Nema, it'll drop a hundred bucks off of it to eight. We should put that in the three uh, D news. Uh, yeah, yeah. Point limiting. Yeah. We want them to be it's, it's like a tablet, like an iPad or uh, Android type thing. It's an it's it's a yeah. It's it comes with Android ten. Okay. So it's it's it's. Uh, a more powerful, uh, bigger version of a hydrogen one, but and, and th but it doesn't have a camera at all, or it just has one on. The no, back? it does. It it it's it's got a stereo camera built in. Well, how come you can't do selfies? It's on the other side, maybe. Yeah, didn't he show like both sides that two cameras in the front, two cameras in the back, or did I not see that correctly? No, that was a different phone. Oh, okay. That was the red, I think. Oh, okay. This this guy, which the picture goes away when I do that. But see, mm. the, I, it still amazes me, and I want I, that you can view horizontally or vertically. I've never seen that on any other device where, that you can switch it, and you see auto stereoscopic in both directions. Oh, if any of you get a chance, you you want to see that paper you put a link to. It explains the inner workings. So uh, it was it's basically, I don't know, uh, Eric or anybody who goes regularly to the SD stereoscopic displays conferences, uh, they talk about integral cameras and integral viewers that were made around 1908. And it was with film and it did kind of the same thing. Yeah, we're not in the same way, but All right. it is slightly relevant. They were cameras that used thousands of fisheye lenses. Basically, it looked like the eye of a full eye. Oh, 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 oh. Um, I hey, have Kuntz, nice here. yawn. Right, yeah, <laughs> right in the know. middle of me talking, Kuntz. Well, that's <laughs> you said integral images. <laughs> <laughs> keep on talking, I'll upload. Hold on. Andy, I just put the link to the, the article from Nature uh, in the hey, chat. So if you want to I'll read about it. the internals, you can get to it there. I, I, oh, okay. Half price a year from now? Let's hope so. <laughs> Should I jump and get a $1,000 tablet in January when they're available? Or will this be on the back of everybody's phones in two years from now? And what, what do we think? This looks like an incredibly promising technology. I can't imagine that this is amazing. You know, I, I, I can imagine the technology getting more ubiquitous. Um, yeah, well, really attractive. One of, one of the things uh, Nima mentioned uh, briefly, and he, he had talked to me about when I visited there, was that uh, they're selling a lot to industry. Like they're, they're trying to get their uh the displays on car dashboards i heard him remember oh okay so as an interface maybe for a car or yeah yeah your house or something like that so interf yeah 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 interesting so a new way so many things need interfaces now more and more things are getting electronic and need interfaces this might be the new frontier for interfaces visual 3d tactile left right right brain something like that 
that's pretty. Yeah, wild. I know that's one of the one of the things they're hoping for. That uh, uh, they see a lot of use in advertising. You know, when he said that, I couldn't help but think of the '50s and all of the stereo realist suitcases that had pictures of, you know, <laughs> lampshades, right? All that stuff you yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So many salesmen for that little window of time in the mid '50s was going to sell home furnishings, barbecues, architecture, everything with those the stereo views. So this is the next generation of that, right? Guys, I gotta go, and I want to just say good night to everybody, and thank you very much. And um, really good. Thank oh, you. I like the link you just posted. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Awesome. You know, Thanks for joining us. Awesome. More, there's a lot more to that, um, but I've I've been I've been I've been given this in in secret, and I feel uh, 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 like I must adhere to my secret keeping. So I only put a clip up there, and I took off the sound, but. Um, that is from a process uh, that's patented called an integram, not an integral image. And if you go look up integram, perhaps that's, you can find more. It was probably it. already patented. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, something, um, uh, uh, we're all just doing the same thing over and over anyway, yeah. you know, I mean, um, but um, yes, so every, 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 everything is already patented, isn't it? Until somebody else patents the next one. But um, that's, um, I've been hearing a lot of fly eye lately. I've been hearing a lot of um, integral um, and, and uh, on the holography boards also. So, um, and um, I, I, I actually really like this guy, Eric. Like he seemed very on the ball and very like, very stereo uh, um, 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 oriented first and then VR after, which is the way to do it. And so like- Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, Nima, Nima's really trying to champion this, so. He's, he's, um, he's like, I, I can already yeah. tell he's a good guy. Like, good. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, and Andy, Andy, to answer your question, uh, I just double checked and what Nima was saying, the back of the loom pad has a stereo camera. It's got two lenses. The front of the loom pad has a single uh, image camera and a time of flight camera. Time of so flight. the Time of flight is a is a depth capture camera. So the front of the camera, the front of the pad, is capturing an image and depth information. The back of the pad is capturing a stereo pair. You talk about the depth mapping. I I so want to see what he talked about because the technology they're using is beyond just left and right cameras. They're using depth mapping as well to make the other views. Which well, is that's uh, you can do that, and somebody mentioned you can do that in stereo photo make. Now. Well, I think you we can, actually even had a. Uh, you can make 3D pictures from a depth map photo from like an iPhone. Well, what Nima no, said, they, they're not, they they're added, not doing. Oh, yeah. they got rid of that. Ugo's program was a plugin used kind of like a plugin. No, it's it's yeah yeah that that's that's different from what what they're doing. They're right. Uh, what Nima explained, they're not creating a depth map. They're not going through. That. They're they're using an algorithm that reads the disparity between the two and then synthesizes multiple views. Yeah. Because it, it well, only has to make camera, but it creates two more views. So it has That's four what views. a depth map yeah. is kind of. Yeah. It's thought, a visual representation mm -hmm. of disparity. Yeah. So so if you take a well, I, actually, picture, actually a, a, a depth map, a depth map, um, mm -hmm. It's it's not so much the disparity. It's it's mapping. It's a, a grayscale that shows pixel distance from the taking lens. Depth queuing. So you can yeah. have a single image uh, and a depth map to go with that image. There's no disparity involved. That's it's, true. It's it's the it's the distance of each pixel from the taking lens, or in the case but of that, a CG model, it's I don't the position in space. That, though, are they? No, no, they're not. They're not doing that. They're they have they have their own proprietary algorithms that uh, look at looks at the disparity between the left and right image. Oh, I see. And yeah, then, your your point is then, well taken. That a depth map does not have to be a representation of the disparity of where you took it, but it's a representation maybe of the desired disparity. So yeah, so in their case, what Nima said, they're they're not generating a 
depth map, mm -hmm. they're taking the disparity and actually mm -hmm. running an algorithm that figures out how to shift the pixels around to create the other views, uh, as opposed to determining what the depth is and then basing views on the depth. Isn't that similar to the uh, kind of algorithms that we've seen uh, uh, in the last 10 years or so that take a, uh, a lenticular with a uh, with two that's made from two lenses and then uh, generates the in-betweens for the uh, uh, in-between views on the lenticular? Um, we... Yeah, it's, it, I, I imagine it's something similar. There's, there's all kinds of techniques that are being used for this. Um, uh, there's optical flow where it essentially uh, moves pixels from the position that they exist in in one picture to the position they exist in in the other picture over time. Uh, almost yeah. kind of a morphing effect. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know specifically what uh, Leia's algorithm is doing because it's proprietary to them. <laughs> I only know how they've described it to me. Um, but it is, it is rather interesting. I can take a stereo pair, I can load it into their application. And uh, like I said, there's a slider that I can move where I can adjust the depth in it until it looks the way that I want it to look. So um, great. Uh, you you feed it two images, it calculates two more, six more, or some in betweens, right? Two more, so it makes four. Two more, two more it makes four. four. Yeah. And then somehow on a slider, um, you can. Yeah. And are you picking? I think it's just the slider's just uh, doing horizontal image translation. I, well, no, it, no, it's it's it's, it's not. It's actually yeah. It's actually it's actually changing how it's generating the four images because yes. I found there's a point. There's a point where I can, where I can move the slider up where I've I've gone too far, and now I start getting aberrations in my images. Yeah. It becomes uncomfortable. It's, it's interesting. It's interesting. And and what's really interesting is you can throw the background out of focus, also even in the stereo, which normally, Oliver would remind us, is not a good thing. But it actually looks kind of neat. Looks kind of neat, and it's been. <laughs> trendy for a few years i still like it it gives it that miniature look sometimes yeah it's, it, you can mess around with it so i you can throw the background out of focus a little bit yeah. even in the area hmm. and then that hollow pics app uh is kind of like an instagram for for the hydrogen one um, or for, for stereo and, photos overall and like 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 we were we were talking about how there are all these kids on instagram sharing their yeah, there's like Instagram at 3D. There's, so you can, there's a, you can a follow few, people. There's a, there's, a, there's a few thousand people who are only sharing 3D photos on these phones. Right. Like, like Jim Kennard. Don't, don't come to these meetings. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. where they're showing stuff. And the, um, there's some famous directors in here too, like Soderbergh and uh, who's, the, like, who's the Fincher? Art Linkletter? No, <laughs> Fincher, the director. Yeah, those guys are into 3D. Do they have Fuji W3s or uh, what are they using? They're using the holocaust. They're using these. They're using those. Okay. And so, yeah, they, yeah. Gennard made them custom uh, camera, uh, red cameras. So he gave them these. Okay. And they're uh, 200 bucks on eBay? If you, yeah, they, yeah. They don't want they're hot. They're, Two, 200, 200 or, or even less. You can find yeah, them this on is, eBay I think now. 125. It was good. This uh, so bad. The battery's not new. I mean, I think it's about a year old. Okay. And this is a website, a community, a social media aggregate thing where people Yeah, are... and I, I bought a, a $10 case for it, which I recommend, and the pop socket, just so you can hold on to it easily. That's and then uh, it's, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, oh, I don't have a, 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 a what do you call the card? The sim card i didn't put a sim card in it i just use wi-fi right yeah i'm i'm not using it as a phone i'm just using it as a as a display phone i'm still using this as a phone let's see if this works it's a little it's a little big but as a display it's nice it's like you know it's getting it's smaller than an ipad mini but it's a big phone and if you and it's and it's not lightweight uh, so if you want to carry me, it in your pocket it gets a little big 
Let me see. I'm going to I'm going to try something. Screen. I don't I I don't know if my camera will pick it up, but let's let's I see. I can almost see that. See you, Valerie. Who's here? Well, let's see. Wow, it's not in oh, three. Hold on. It 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 just turned off. Hold on. Oh my god. Okay. Oh. Here we go. Before we go, I'm going to ask if how many people were in the B category tonight because I missed yeah, there it. There we go. Okay. There were two. You and there you go. Sangeeta, but she only entered one image. It works when I turn. Am I allowed to be in the B category? Yeah, yeah. that's no problem. Oh, so who entered that? Uh, Somebody better do it. David, who entered that New Mexico folder picture of the Pinnacles? Like that. Uh, I think it was Lee. I don't even remember. No, mine were Eric. Eric, we'll go right back and forth again. Thank you. I, Who's that? I asked a question. Go sure. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Interesting. Okay, I'm her. Please do. Yeah, you can, see, you, you, can see the, you can see the point where it switches to pseudo. Yeah. But it does work. For, for ten, 10 bucks on Amazon, there's a case. I forget who made it. Spec, um, I think, or something. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Very awesome. The anachronistic society. This is dying technology. It's a discontinued. <laughs> yeah. Spec. That's it's a spec logo. Yeah, but the but the but the loom pad is a new product. So exactly. So they're picking up. I yeah. Mean, they they. Expect it's not even. It's things. not that it's a new product. It has a it has a full like entire like a uh, 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 product life cycle built into it. Not an old product. Yeah. That it's a brand new product, but with this thing that's replacing yeah. hide, what faith do they have that people are going to adopt this uh, holo thing? Uh, I mean, not the holo thing, the lumi, the luma. You know, this has a bright future. What what happened? Um, I don't know. They have a huh? You know, I wouldn't somebody be a investor. Somebody disappeared. Everything in three D dies eventually, right, David? It's cyclical. If it survives, I'll eat my shorts. Well, everything dies eventually. <laughs> I'm gonna jump in about a thousand dollar pad that's gonna be dead in two years. Yeah. Oh, a thousand dollars is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's probably a fantastic screen. Yeah. It um, it says, it says, says, says the guy selling it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, yeah, it would be good to see it first, but I don't know. Yeah. How, how is it? Well, twelve hundred dollars for iPad. Chris, wait, iPad. Yeah, iPad. Chris, wait two I, years. I, and the price will be one hundred twenty-five <laughs> on eBay. <laughs> no, I waited. Yeah, I, I have. I haven't seen a production model, so I, I, I can't really tell you what it looks oh. like. I, I only saw prototypes. And what do those look like? The timing is bad. Uh, they, they actually, they, they, they look like a, like a. A larger version of this phone. That I haven't fucking seen now. <laughs> well, yeah. I was I was chatting with him and he said the the throw distance on it is like really remarkable. He said that it could like reach like twelve feet, and that puts it into a category that is very very special because um, you can remove an entire parameter of. Uh, of, 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 of where a viewer will end up if you put a display like that on the floor, because you will always be within a range of four to six feet off the ground eye level. And something like that could um, be just like an entirely new method of advertising. It's very rusty and when we need it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, well, it's the cowboy bebop. Yeah, it's not a drawback. It's Dude, a drawback. for real, that's going to be the beginning it's of it, man. A stereoscopic screen. And, uh, you know, what was the Tom Cruise movie? Um, uh, I, have, I, have entire, I have an entire nerdy website devoted to the holographic and stereoscopic technology since cowboy bebop. Do you yeah. don't think I don't? I've been on it. <laughs> oh, have you? Thanks for tainting up my website. <laughs> <laughs> Can, can I actually ask a, a, a real question? Um, no, you're uh, no, no, no. Well, you weren't able to. You actually, you actually, um, you actually questioned my methods, and I'm right. <laughs> but um, so I have um, uh, um, uh, a very weird box box holographic oh. display that is ancient, and I looked inside of it for the first time, and these surfaces are they're probably front surface mirrors, and they are dusty as hell. 
and um, I'm wondering the best method of cleaning them. And I was thinking of going in with like a feather and like having a vacuum to suck out the dust. And then my boyfriend said, why don't you just use negative ion, blah, 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 blah. And that will remove the dust. And I was like, oh, I actually can use negative ion because I have a UVC light bulb that I was using to sterilize everything for COVID. And it produces, um, uh, what's that shit called? Ozone. And um, so that's negatively charged ions. So I'm wondering, how that's do funny. I use negatively well, charged all, ions uh, to remove dust from front There's surface so many yeah. fucking hey, things David. what you said. I don't did even you know try it. Hey, and David, did it work? David, David uh, did you put point. any... David, did you put any cleaning instructions in the manual for that thing? But that's well, what I'm saying. And David wrote the fucking white paper on it, and he doesn't even know the answer. Well, I didn't. Not the service manual. I wrote that. How do you use it? Um, well, first you know, of all, negative ions straight. only occur in a solution. Yeah. First of all, the oath, uh, ozone isn't a negative ion. It's, yeah, it's, it's O3. A, so it's, it's O3, not what you it's need. Not a negative ion. In my opinion. Go, go look up right now. Go look up. Go look up UVC. I'm well aware. Okay, I know what UVC is, and let me say okay. two things about that. Mm -hmm. Number one, because now this thing's in a rage because of coronavirus, and um, I've uh, I, most I've worked with, I've talked with testing labs that are testing these sources, and the vast majority of them that are claimed to be UVC, number one, don't emit UVC, which is like 200 okay. units or whatever. So the chances that it is UVC are slim. Um, second of all, like I say, that that's not going to negatively ionize a dust particle. What you could get is either one of those old-fashioned um, negative or um, oh, I'm gonna just use a big have, feather and a vacuum. You kind of can, but you the ion thing is not completely insane, only partially. You remember those brushes they had for photographs that had a little radioactive shit in them? No, yes. I don't, but he probably does. Well, they have so I want yeah. brushes to clean film from. Yes, and those things, okay. that's what they did. They ionized stuff, and that caused the dust to not okay. adhere electrostatically, and that's why they yeah. worked so damn well. Now, uh, you have to recharge okay. your radioactive goo every so often, so you can't just get an old one. It'll be okay. discharged. But my question for you was was there any like 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 component in it that would be ruined by having like any sort of like uv light source well, concentrated possibly, on i mean a, a lot of uv light i mean not for the amount of the not for the intensity and the amount of time you'll expose to but uv in general is not good for things it'll cause a lot of oh, problems. I know. It'll darken it'll age stuff yada yada um so yeah you know, the answer to that is, yeah, UV in general isn't good for stuff, mm -hmm. but the chances that you're going to put out enough of it with that thing to harm anything are slim. The well, I just didn't, I just didn't know. I, I mean, like, it was the first time I opened it up, and, like, I yeah. know conceptually, abstractly, like, how it's done, but I actually never opened up the unit because, well, like, I never had to change that fucking way. bowl. People have been cleaning first surface mirrors for the last several billion yeah, years. Yeah, but they haven't been cleaning like 11 by 17 size that are like crammed into like something. And I'm not opening up the housing because that's just going to disturb it. And like, what, I'm what have I would, what I would, up. Alicia, what I would suggest is uh, look into cleaning supplies for uh, uh, reflector telescopes. Oh, I did. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's what that, I'm that, saying. That's, that's, that's how yeah. that's how I got into the negative ion yeah. discussion. You got you use either like DI water or you know um, reagent. I'm not putting water on that. Well, DI water. It's not going to leave. DI water. Deionized water. Deionized water. Yes, that leaves, okay. That's what's commonly used to clean optics. It leaves no residue whatsoever. It has no minerals, um, or a reagent grade acetone or some other solvent i'm not i'm not i'm not i'm not using i'm not using any solvents on it i'll go in with right. like a feather and like a, a a little tiny mini vacuum with like a goose deck on it or something before i do that that's or probably just okay other than you you use ethanol it. david it has if it's reagent grade it that'll probably be yeah fine. And that'll i be use so reagent grade ethanol yeah. but i do sometimes drag a chem wipe over. That, that, that's fine although the chem wipes are a little on the abrasive side you really should use like a true lens cloth thing oh um, i can oh, just I thought, get that yeah you're right and the drag but that com that drag method is common you put the lens tissue down you hit it with the um you know, um, solve it and, and it's face down and then you just drag it and just the force of gravity, you don't press on it, you just drag it and that does it. But it has to be 
you know, like I say, reagent grade ethanol or some solvent or DIY. These are these are these are mounted these are mounted uh, vertically, not hey, horizontally. Uh, you'd have to yeah, make Alicia, sure Alicia. whatever you're doing this there's, on. There's I, there's I, a question. Test it on the plastic first. Whatever there's, you're there's using. There's a question. It, test it on the. There's plastic. a question in the chat. Alicia, could you just describe what the Vox box is for people? Oh who yeah, don't yeah. Know? Hold on, I'll show you. So everybody's in my room is either sleeping or like playing like 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 fucking like final strike on fucking computer. So like I can't like really turn on the lights. So hold on a second. I'll get it. Wait right here. Man, I love that she had that picture. Cause that described the camera I was talking about so well. I'm just scrolling through holopics. Oh, I'm jealous. I want one. <laughs> I, I thought I would share it with you guys, but I never got a chance. You really see 50 pictures a day, unique ones coming in? It, it, yeah. There's a, yeah, yeah, there, yeah. Oh, definitely. Lots of unique. And is it just people selfies and their friends or? No, it's, they're pretty good. No, they're it's, it's, And they're from all over the world. But the interaction. Yeah, there's quite a variety. Some are, some are, are not so great. Uh, but there are a lot of pictures that people are posting that are really stunning pictures. Yes. People are good on the internet. And they're made with a tiny interocular. So, okay. Well, you want to see what a box box? Closer so, by the way, this is a testament towards everybody not listening to me because the first question I asked everybody was, does anybody know where to get box box films from? And David, like, okay, so this is a box box. Hold on. Wait, let me oh put my, my ca can I put my camera the other way? How the fuck do I do that? Yes. There's a little icon for it usually. Boom, oh, look at me, mind. I have a working phone. Okay, so this is a box box. And this was a medical imaging display specifically, and it was designed by Stephen Hart of um, Voxel Technologies. And I think right now uh, the company is called Holorad. They're based out in Utah. And basically, um, okay, so, um, uh, um, 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 and, and David Kuntz, you wrote the fucking actual uh, white paper on this, which is ridiculous. And um, so this I had on watch on my eBay list for about like a year and a half and then like the person actually messaged me like are you gonna buy this thing already and i was so scared i was like pressured i was peer pressured into buying it but the only reason why i held off is because i didn't have any films for it there was no media that i could find to view on it and because it's a medical grade like you know basically you're only going to get things like 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 uh, uh mris of like people's like 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 uh hearts and like you know stuff like that and so i was unable to find um um, any um, any film for it for about four years until I realized that um, a man, uh, Bob Hess, who's a holographer from like, you know, back in the holographer days, um, and he had the entire stock of images. And also he works hand in hand with uh, Stephen Hart, who is the man who designed this unit. So basically it illuminates a hologram in such a way that it is a pain in the ass for me to clean and that's why I'm asking these ridiculous questions <laughs> because it has like a front surface mirror that has a, uh, a, 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 a big giant Fresnel on it. And then there's like a 30 degree uh, uh, space with like another either front surface mirror or uh, half silvered, I'm not sure what this is. And then like over here is like some light bulb that I didn't even know that I'm not allowed to touch until David was like, don't touch it with your fingers. And I'm like, oh, okay. I thought it was for my safety. He's like, no, you don't get oil on a quartz bulb. And I'm like, okay. And- um, Oh yeah, they explode. Yeah. I, 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 apparently, I, I thought it was. For, I thought it was for my safety. Like he was looking out for me, but it was like, no, don't get the bulb schmutzy. You know. Yeah. I don't want you to fight the bulb up. For you can. That's, I, I, apparently, <laughs> I, I had no idea. So is there a, this is a video on Twitter, or is it just is it take film in there? Or something? It's a film. So basically, hold on, hold on, hold on. So wait one more second, because I'll get you a film, but you can't really see it without this box box technology lighting it from behind because basically what it does is project the hologram into real space in front of you or so it claims oh and it does it, is, it forms a real image so this is this is what i'm really excited it's about is that parallel. when i clean this i might actually be able to see that because otherwise it just looks like a regular hologram 
So hold on here. Uh, I mean, what, what it was what it was uh, developed for was the idea was you would take you know medical images like a right. you know, an X ray except it's a three D X ray and that the surgeon or diagnostician because it's a real image that's projected out into space you can interact with it. So in other words you can take a ruler and you can stick it right up to the thing and measure it as if the thing is really there except of course it's just light so you can interpenetrate it. A surgeon could explore the idea of, hmm, am I going to be able to get my hand in there? So, am I trying to work on this? Or how do I reach around? You know, all that sort of stuff. So is, is what it's doing projecting an aerial image of a Correct. hologram? Yeah, it's okay. a real image formed in space. That's exactly what it is. Typically, they were done so that they were half and half. In other words, whatever you're looking at, half of it projected Man, I don't even know if that's true. I think I may be spitballing. I haven't seen this thing since 1995. So if, forgive me if I'm slightly rusty on the details, but that's the last time I saw this thing. And for all I know, that- Did you see this unit? unit? That, I, that's what I was going to say. For all I know, that may be the only unit. This, this, I, from, from what I know, this is the only unit yeah, because so uh, the one I that Bob this, Hess yeah. has is cracked yeah. and it's of a different model. I don't know. So I, I remember they called us down to Laguna you know, we went, it was in 95, Stephen Hart called us and yep. we went in and saw it. They showed it to us. It blew my button down mind. Of course, I was already, had been taking 3D for, you know, almost 20 years by then. So I was somewhat conversant with it and I, you know, completely went berserk and, um, you know, we wrote the stuff on it and uh, then, you know, of course they disappeared because, um, you know, like every 3D product, nobody freaking wanted to buy it. Um, until like this thing showed up. I don't know how you searched for it on eBay because how did you know such a thing existed? It's um, the most I, 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 thing. Seem, I seem to, um, well, I, you, you know my direction and um, uh, uh, I, I, this is kind of what I specialize in is every single type of way to do something. And well, I don't know what the hell you're doing in front of the, your, your tricks nightlight there because you can't see squat without the uh, but, like, well you can't right now but hold on I'm, I'm getting something i'm getting something hold on the spirits are speaking to you yeah you, you only see it with the vox box you got to replace the goddamn box. listen dude listen don't tell me what is and what is not ah oh look who's seeing something now okay so you see this grid pattern <laughs> on a, right on a, com on a completely unrelated <laughs> on a completely unrelated note I'm finding it kind of disturbing that Ed Ogawa's profile is just a picture of him because I just keep glancing over and thinking that he's frozen there. Oh. Ed, who is that? Oh, yeah. I'm, Ed, I'm frozen. Ed, yeah, we have a few workers. Maybe it's time yeah. to call them out. Uh, who's Ed? I, you know, I can. He's our treasure. I might be able to cast. I might be able to clarify something about the Vox box. All right. Thank you. The, oh yeah. The, okay. Because, I knew we had yeah, a because we, photograph. Because, oh, hold on. Because in, the in 1982, I worked at um, Disney Imagineering before it was called Imagineering. And for uh, Journey into Imagination in Florida, uh, we made the, one of the largest holograms in existence at that time. And it's made with a laser. It was made with a laser. And... Um, What's recorded on the film is not an image. It's an interference pattern between the laser light and the light reflected off of the objects in the scene. So when you look at the film uh, with the naked eye, you can't see anything that makes any sense. And so what David said is true. You ha it has to be played back by having the film mounted in that box with um, um, a, at least one light source. Maybe Rats. there are two light sources, but well, no, this the, is a, uh, the light sources have to reproduce or take advantage of that interference pattern in the film to recreate the real image either uh, projected or inside this the window. This isn't quite the same thing. It's uh, along similar lines, but this is not a um, this is not a hologram in that sense. It's essentially an integram, looping right back to what we talked before. Namely, it is made from a series of tomographic slices that are that are acquired using traditional radiographic technology. You know, CAT scan or 
um, tomog you know, a regular radiographic tomography or whatever. And then those are essentially turned into an integram. And then the whole cute thing about the Vox box is, is that it takes the light source and it sends it through this unbelievably complex, a kind of a Fresnel louvered thing to make it as if it was a zillion different sources. So then each slice of the integram is now illuminated from the correct angle and yes. yada, yada, boom, boom. Then you see the thing in 3D. All right. Uh, but it's completely incoherent. It doesn't use a laser um, to, to display it. Um, no, it uses a halogen bulb reflected. Yeah. Right. So what and I'm is doing it reflected right now, for every image? Yeah, it, it's, it has it's, a way of Basically, what I have to do thing. is change the bulb. And then but I mean, the bulb. Touch it. So there's lenses that the bulb goes through. It's not a well. It's yeah, essentially. Squares. It's a essentially that. It's a. It's way more complicated than that. It's like a Fresnel thing, and like I say, it it does this clever thing. You'd have to see the the diagram. Well done. Okay, um, can you get that? Now, where do you mount the film? The film so um, there's only one uh, source for the film that I found, which is Bob Hess himself, who works with. Um, Stephen Hart on developing um, these. Uh, they're, they're basically working on what would be the box box, like, you know, um, version like three or four or five or whatever they're up to. Um, and um, here, actually, I'm faking it good enough because that's what I do. I'm Alicia. I do fucking things that I'm not supposed to. So here we go. And now then, this is reproducing. And, and well, we this is actually. You we don't see you now. <laughs> oh, wait. You enable your video. Oh, oh, oops. There we go. Okay, hold on. <laughs> right? I, yeah, exactly. So hold on. So you can see that you're getting a little something right here. And this is basically either the halogen or the LED that I just shoved in there to. Oh, I thought I saw it, but it was a reflection of you. Okay, no, so I, this I is. See, I, I see. Yeah, I see a grid. Okay, so this is actually yeah. very, it's, it's so funny that you say that. So when I received this, I actually got a lot of um, holograms. Um, I, 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 was, I basically like inherited all the fucking holograms ever uh, about two years ago. And um, basically <laughs> when I got this, um, this image was the first one that I put in. And he didn't tell me what movie it was from, but he, this is, he basically sent me um, the only like non-medical imaging holograms ever created for this. And he said it that it was for like a Hollywood movie. And I think it's for Lawnmower Man, right? Uh. <laughs> um, because it's like on this grid and it was like a human face, right? But when I put it in, I didn't see it really well. And I ended up like going eye to eye with it. And when I did that, my eye was lined up with its eye and I thought it was actually a reflection of myself at first. And then I was like, whoa. And then I'm like, wait a second, that's not me. And then I like backed up and I couldn't understand what was going on. I'm like, is this the first medical image of like a human face transplant? And it scares the shit out of me every time I look at it. And somewhat, Ooh. it's somewhat viewable around, can anybody see that? That you can kind of see that it's a little face and an eye. And it's freaky. <laughs> Just show us one of the x-rays, God damn it. What happened? Just show us the x-ray. Okay, okay, maybe I'll show you an x-ray. Hold on. Sorry, guys. <laughs> well, Eric, well, if I shut off my computer, will it end this meeting because that's the host or not? Dude, that's what are you funny? Yeah, if, yes. Yes. It will? Oh. Oh, it will? Was, well, it'll give you, it'll give you, no, David, if you leave, it'll give you the option to assign someone else hosting. Because I want to shut off my main um, computer. I've got two strings signed in, but the main one that I'm not on right now is the host. Anyway, uh, oh, the main here you go. We got to, for, for group B, we got to get more people in group B. I, was, I gave Randy a big sales pitch, but he's working his butt off. He didn't get around to it. What's group B? In the for photo... Photos, uh, competition. Photo, it's the yeah.